and you're very welcome to Destination Yuri's coverage here of the Bestbrook Cup final. Well, this is going to be a cracking game of football between Orchard and Bestbrook. Bestbrook, well, they took part in the very first final 45 years ago. This is the 45th Cup final. Bestbrook Products won the first one and the second one. And Bestbrook here, well, they got beat. They won three years ago, they beat Clary Celtic. And out here, Orchard this evening, they got beat in last year's final. So they're coming to town hoping to get a result. And of course, there's a bit of a crossover between uh, how does Dacky Carville operate the night if he scores a goal for Orchard? What does he do for Bestbrook? Dacky played for both. Anyway, we're looking forward to a cracking game of football here tonight down in the showgrounds. As I say, a return uh, to the showgrounds after the little mishap on Boxing Day. We're down here. The pitch is in immaculate condition. I walked on it earlier on. The, the wind is blowing towards the clubhouse end. So it's going to be a cracking game of football. We we'll look forward to that. And we have a, we have a few wee, uh, interviews. Damien Rafferty caught up with a couple of the lads today. He was down looking about the showgrounds here today. So uh, we'll just watch that. And then we have the folly up to the cup final and how the teams got there. And we'll be back for the start of the match live here on Destination Uri's first live coverage stream of the Bestwood Cup Final 2014. And yes, you join us here now on the morning of the Bestwood Cup Final. We've come down just to, to have a good look round at the pitch. Uh, we're sitting in the four best seats in the house now. I wonder who will be sitting on these tonight. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely day. It's cold. Uh, hopefully the rain stays away. And, you know, there's a good crowd in here, a good atmosphere. And, and we'll be going live now shortly. Uh, about half seven's a kickoff, so we're going to head down pitch side now and get a look at the the surface and and the fantastic facilities that they have down here at Newry City. Um, so we're delighted you can join us on Destination Newry. So you join us now pitch side. Um, we've just come down. You'll see the floodlights in the corner. Um, you might notice something missing when we walk around the far side, but. The pitch is perfect as it always is here down in Uri. Uh, fantastic service for playing football. We're, we're up here in front of the, the One Point Road goal, so it'll be interesting to see maybe how many goals are scored here in the first half. Um, we're just going to take a walk around, and you'll see the goals. Well, he's on, on, on his lunch now, but he's getting the pitch ready for the night. And if you come over to this corner, um, you'll see, hopefully now tonight, you'll not see too much shadow. You know. You, the three floodlights will be sufficient for the lads uh, playing. So if you're left back tonight or, or right wing, you know, the wee bit of a shadow you might get away with snaking in behind. But you'll notice that the, the floodlights are missing us out in the car park. They're trying to get it fixed. But um, hopefully again, we're going to go down the far end, have a look at that gold mouth, and we'll be in the change rooms. So we've made our way now out to the, the centre of the field. Um, again, we'll emphasise how good the pitch is. You know, probably one of the best soccer pitches in, in Northern Ireland. And... It's probably a good thing that they didn't go ahead with making it into the 3 or 4G that they, they, they thought about doing last year because the lads getting to play on the grass pitch is, is fantastic and it's just a pity some of the pitches around Uri, you know, couldn't be as good a quality as this but there'll be no excuses at all tonight. The wind is very light, you know, it's cool, there's overcast so hopefully we're in for a great festival of football later on tonight and if we look at the stand like, what a setup for for the New York City AFC lads playing week in week out so it's great for the Canberra and League lads to get a chance and run out so hopefully there's more and more of this to come and we'll keep the coverage and destinies in Newry uh, for the throughout the year. We've come in here to the away dressing rooms where Bestbrook United will be getting changed at the present minute um, they'll be nervous, there'll be encouragement, they'll be getting rubs getting their boots ready and I'm sure Tommy Mooney will do plenty of shouting and rowing to get the lads out so that the Orchard City fellas in the other home change rooms uh, will hear the intensity coming from this room and they'll be looking to match it come the start 7.30 and the kick off for the start of the game. You're very welcome back. Well, we've just been handed the starting 11 for both teams. Bestbrook, the starting 11 for Bestbrook. Connor Ruddy, Stephen Lochran, Anthony Bennett, Sean Cinnamon, Kevin Carr, Stephen Matthews, Ben Trainer, Gareth Hughes, 
Brian Ferguson, Philip Hughes and Dermot Fern. They're starting 11 for Archard. Joe Price, Peter Markey, Christopher Havern, Declan Allister, Stephen Wiley, Lee Feeney, Jonathan Black, Keith Johnson, Stephen Daly, Thomas McCann and that man, Dacky Carvel, who played for Bestbrook last year. I think maybe we've done in the first match live on Destination Uri, Dacky Carvel. I think he might have been playing for Bestbrook that night, but he definitely played for Bestbrook. As you look through the teams, I see Ben Trainer. Ben, I don't know what age he is, but he's probably as old as Methuselahism. He's about a long, long time. Lee Feeney, the man that played for Linfield, he, well, he's a class act. He's a brilliant, brilliant man in the middle of the field, and he's a cracking, well, he's a cracking free kicker, so it's going to be all to play for here tonight in the Bestbrook Cup final. So we're just going to go and have a little look at uh, what Dackie Carvel thinks of the, the whole setup here tonight. Hello and you're welcome to uh, the special programme from Destination Newry covering uh, the Bestbrook Cup final between uh, Orchard City and Bestbrook United. And we're delighted that uh, Declan Kjorvan from Orchard City has joined us for a quick chat just in the build up to the game. You're very welcome, Declan. Thanks very much, David. Good to see you got the hair in the town all yeah. done for coming in. <laughs> yeah, looking right. well. <laughs> Stop chatting Paul last night, <laughs> getting tips. Um, ex Bestbrook United man playing for Orchard. How does it feel now facing your old teammates in the final? Uh, yeah, it'll be good to get a rattle a few of the boys, like, but I would say if I maybe scored, I wouldn't do too much celebrating, like, but hopefully from my own team at the minute, we'll give it a go and hopefully we'll get the result we need. Like. Yeah, you played four or five years, good successful years with Bestbrook. Yeah, won a lot of trophies at Bestbrook, uh, leagues, most local cups, unfortunately we beat in the Irish Junior Cup final, uh, it was a tough game, but uh, yeah, made a lot of friends out there, and yeah. hopefully we'll get a reunited today this weekend. So for 90 minutes they'll not be friends but no. afterwards in the club you get a pint with them or Yeah whatever. hopefully so, hopefully I'll be the happier man. Good, good. The Orchard City project. Yeah. They joined it last year. Yeah. In the, in the first division. First division, Won it yeah. handy enough. Yeah. Top of the premiership now. You're going well. Yeah it's a good organisation like uh, it's well run. Credit to everyone with the club like uh, just we're trying to build something there you know. Uh, Maybe moving into immediate league the next year or so, uh, but there this year in the league was definitely still up for a chance of winning it as well. Yeah, yourselves and Wimble, like Wimble around a long time. Yeah, a lot of experienced players of Wimble. Yeah, Wimble are going well this year. They're in the final of Mid Ulster Shield. They're in the semi final of the Irish Cup. They're in the running for the league, like so. They're obviously building something there as well, you know. Yeah, bigger ambitions out in Orchard City with, with Clifford and that, and yeah, you know, you're hoping to go. Hopefully to go further, yeah. To go further. Just start planning for their own pitch and all now, like so. Seems to be on the, the up. Pitch out beside the orchard, out yeah, the bar, yeah. Out the bar, yeah. yeah. But some setup now is done, you know. Yeah, well, surely, yeah. So hopefully, he's a, he's a, he's a lot of players there. Who who will keep an eye out for the night now? Uh, there's a few players there. A few boys have a few knocks, like, but uh, Lee Feeney's come back there from Australia there with a bit of experience in his head. And he came on there the last two weeks and he sort of settled things a bit more. Uh, Kevin Henry suspended, which will be a big mess for us, like, but. Uh, Hopefully, we'll, we'll be looking for Dougie Carvel. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully. You should be able to beat us in the final last year, so you know, hopefully go one better. Yeah, get well, it over best some, uh, when the semi finals were put out, I like, uh, thought we would have got maybe a wee bit of revenge this year, Wimble, but it wasn't to be. But Bestbrook obviously were the better team in the semi final, so we'll welcome them with open arms too. Yeah, and in Bestbrook, who are the danger men? You have Philly Hughes. You've yeah, you've got Philly Hughes there up front. He's done it for years, like he's proven. Uh, they've got Gareth Hughes back in there from New York City in the centre of the field, and they've obviously got Ben Trainer as well, who's a bit of experience. Ben's still going, what is Ben's? He's still going, enough, he? he doesn't know when to give up. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a match, Clearly Celtic now, the start of the year, and Ben got man of the match. Yeah. The Damien McCullough awarded it, so it doesn't mean too much. So. Yeah, I wouldn't say so. <laughs> no, well, Ben will be running about the showgrounds. Maybe uh, the big pitch might catch up in the legs of Ben's, wouldn't it? Yeah, you never know, he seems to keep himself in good shape. <laughs> in good shape. Um, a bit of Gaelic, Daggy, you're, you're playing a bit with Carl Cruppen as well. Yeah, you? playing a bit there. We're just new managers in this year, a bit of a change. Like uh, We were away there actually last weekend for a team bond weekend, so it was good. Like, but, we'll uh, not talk about that then. We'll not talk about that too much. <laughs> but uh, hopefully uh, we'll get push on further than we did last year, maybe get a better run championship. 
Yeah, and how do you find trying to play, you know, the Orchard, I would say, fairly take it serious on a yeah, Saturday, so playing the matches Friday nights or Sundays? Yeah, we train uh, the Orchard there Tuesday and Thursday and March, Saturday, and then we Gaelic here Tuesday, Friday and Sundays, or even Friday, Saturdays as well, like, you know, so it's a lot. It's trying to balance the both, like, but I suppose that's what you have to do. Yeah, semi-final, you, you tell me, is we're 1-0 down, you came off the bench, you changed the game, scored two. Yeah, well, I was actually... Uh, I got sent off uh, two weeks before that, <laughs> and I uh, missed the game the week before, so we just went with the same team, but I just had to come off the bench and hit two, you know. And you'll start tonight at the game, will you? Yeah, I would like to think so, yeah. I hope so. We'll hope so. Best of luck anyway. And Thanks we'll very much. You might be getting out two or three goals, and we might see you after if you get man of the match. Too well, that's so great. So thanks, thanks for that in. So yeah. Don't forget, folks, you'll be able to see the match live uh, up at half seven, and it'll be back up in demand on Saturday for anybody who wants to watch it. Maybe the winning team will put it on the pub and celebrate again. OK, thanks, Dougie. Thanks very much, David. to the start of the Bestwood Cup final. Well, Gareth, great to have you on board here this evening for the first half anyway. Yeah, thanks very much, Damon. Um, it should be a good occasion. It's great that they actually uh, they held off and made sure the match was played at the showgrounds. Um, so it was the premier sort of ground in the area. I mean, obviously the problems at on Boxing Day uh, with the, the floodlight going down. The floodlight's still not back up, but hopefully should be, should, there should be enough lighting for a good game anyway, Damon. There's no doubt. And I was on the pitch earlier on. The pitch is in perfect condition. And of mm -hmm. course, the man in the middle tonight is Neil Cousins. I think Neil uh, refereed the guys earlier on this year. So yeah. looking forward to a great game of football. Yeah, I mean, Neil's an experienced uh, um, current being league referee. I mean, it should be, should be a good game. I mean, Orchard City have been sort of a revelation over the last couple of years in the current being league. Um, they're going into the match as favourites, but I mean, I don't think you can ever write off a Bestbrook United side. So hopefully, get a good game. And you know, there's a decent enough wee crowd here, so we'll get a good 90 minutes, maybe maybe extra time penalties. Well, there's no doubt, and of course, uh, we want all the excitement here tonight on live Destination Yuri Soccer Special, the Bestbrook Cup Final. And Gareth, as I look out here, uh, this is going to test our ability to see the numbers <laughs> because of the shadow without the stanchion down here in the corner. Yeah, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a wee bit difficult, but I'm sure I'm, I'm sure we'll plug away and get it right eventually, Damon. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And of course, Lee Feeney, a very experienced footballer. Yeah, well, I remember uh, Lee when he played for um, New York City. Obviously, he's an ex Rangers. Uh, player as well, but I remember him down playing for New York City, and he, he was excellent certainly in his first 18 months uh, down at the showground. So he should know the pitch well. There's a, there's a lot of experience in that on that team uh, on, on both sides. Sorry, but the two, it's going to be a battle of the two strikers. I think Declan Carvel for Orchard City and uh, Philip Hughes, who's you know, scores been an average of 30 goals a season for Bestwick United. So I think whoever wins that battle will probably win the game. Well, no doubt, and we're just getting ready for the start of the game. The referee's looking down, the two goalkeepers, he's given the nod, and the game is off. Ball is pushed back, so Bestbrook tidying up in defence, putting the ball out to Bennett. Bennett pushes it back. Very, uh, uh, Haven pushes it back. The and Kevin Carr goes long, headed in. An opportunity here, but the keeper comes out and picks that one up. Gareth, no pressure. No, I mean I think you looked uh, the header, the header back out from the uh, Mortar City from the centre back Chris Haven. Um, he's arguably the best defender in the, in the Caribbean league. Um, it'll take a lot for Philly Hughes to get past him, but I mean the two of them have had plenty of battles over the years, so that should be a good test and uh, you know an exciting, an exciting sort of uh, marker for the game. Chris Haven's won the first couple of headers, so um, I mean hope uh, Philip sort of just needs to get his foot in the ball and get into it. Well, there's no doubt, but there is a fair breeze blowing down towards the clubhouse end here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a I mean bit of a pull there, so. Best we're going to a wee bit of pressure trying to get the ball forward, but great bit of work there by McCann for Orchard. Ball's pushed forward. Dacky Carvel chests it down. Gets up in the air. The two Bestbrook men go for that one, leave it, and it's pushed forward. A wee bit panicky from Bestwick at the start, Gareth. Yeah, I think I mean in the early stages of any game, particularly a cup final, um, you know, it's all about who settles first, who settles the best uh, on a bigger pitch. But uh, I mean, I think both teams just fight, fighting their feet. But um, Orchard looked to be sort of just keeping the ball a wee bit better just in these very early stages. And the ball is pushed long down towards the corner. An opportunity for Orchard here, but Bestbrook well, the sweep up well at the end, and the referee give. That's a good kick. That's a good kick. Well, I thought it was a corner. He was pointing, but the referee was closer than we were. So it's the first goal kick of the evening. 
I'm just looking the way that they're lining out. They seem to be um, lining out in sort of a f- regulation 4 4 twos. Um, I'm looking at Gareth Hughes there, the man with immense experience, started off the season in your City FC and then went back to um, Bestbrook. He's up against Lee Feeney. So, I mean, the two of those lads in there have got all the experience in the world. So, there's a couple of key battles over the pitch here, you know, that you just to be sort of uh, interesting. Whoever wins those be individual battles just may end up their team may end up going to win the game. Well, there's no doubt. And when you do mention Lee Feeney, like a very, very experienced footballer, I mean, he's been at the top level and uh, he could be a huge a huge uh, launch pin for Archer here this evening yeah I mean I think it's uh, and I'm sure Lee would probably admit himself that he, he probably won't last last the 90 minutes but that's what he does in that time on the pitch I mean uh, last season's best World Cup final Orchard were unluckily beaten by uh, Windmill Stars and a very good game in Boxing Day uh, there's a free but uh, not too much about nothing the referee's probably just going to give a little talking to the Archer player telling him to settle down yeah, I don't think there's any need for getting the book, book out just yet, early stages of the game. But the good crowd has turned up here, Gareth, this evening for the Best Week Cup final. And uh, a new cup has been presented for the first time. Yeah, I think it's the 45th year, I think you were saying. Yep. Of, uh, so it, it's, good, it's good to have a new trophy for uh, for one of these teams to pick up. Um, I mean, I think the last one was probably battered and bruised after getting celebrated with over the last 44 years. So it's and the good, first it's good the, to one. the first team ever to win was Bestbrook Products. They won the first one and the second way back in 1968, 69. I think that's one of the features of the game. Bestbrook are going to have uh, all the history on their side, but team history counts for nothing on the night. It's a cliche, but it's ever played better than the night. Well, there's a good tussle from Bennett in the middle of the park there, but the ball is pushed along. The, the bikes just haven't settled down yet, Gareth. You know, a little bit panicky. Yeah, I mean, as I said earlier on, Orchard just look a little bit more more settled on the ball, but it's very early stages yet. We're just only three and a half minutes in. Um, but, I mean, if the, game, if the game keeps going on at this pace... There's a super know. ball in there, and, well, let's head it yes. out for a corner. Yeah, it's kept big Kevin Carr there, uh, heading the ball clear. I mean, um, once you see it early on, Deck, deck and Carver make it runs into the channels. If he makes those runs out, then his fellow f- uh, forwards and midfielders have to get beyond him, support him in the box if he's going wide. Well, the first corner of the evening here. So we'll see how this ball floats in because the breeze is blowing down towards uh, the canal court stand here in the showgrounds. Gareth? Um, uh, Johnny Black taking the corner. I mean, uh, he got a great left foot on him, so we'll see if we can put this one. That's a super ball in. Well, keeper comes out yeah, keeper. and does well there. So <laughs> great bit of work there from Connor Ruddy. Yeah, I mean, it'll be good for him to get a feel of the ball very early in the game and um, just get his hands on it. I think Bestwick probably needed somebody up there, Gareth, and yeah. they hadn't got, hadn't got the runners coming in. I mean, that was the case of um, Philip Hughes was coming out wide to pick up the ball. And as I said earlier on, just a minute ago with Declan Carville, midfielders in, need, need to come up and support and then fill that space. He's leaving when he's coming out. And then, of course, Joe Price, a very, very experienced Goalkeeper? Yeah, I think Joe will be keen to make amends for uh, last year's Best Cup final. Unfortunately, I think it was his error in the last minute that allowed Joe McLaughlin to score the winner for Windmill Stars. But, I mean, Joe's been there and done it, got the T-shirt, So, but he, he still got that hunger to win trophies. No doubt, and Best on the attack here, but they've lost the ball in the middle. They've got it back again, pushed down towards the corner, and we wait to see what's happening. Still kept in play over on the far side, but... It was a good tackle there by Johnny Black. Uh, as soon as Philip Hughes picked up the ball, they're closing him down. Still, they, they're well aware he's the best brick danger man. The referee tells him to go back a little bit, so he tries to steal about 10, ten metres. <laughs> very, very tight over along the far line. Along the ground. Archer pushes out to Markey. Markey waits on it. Pushes it back. Well, the referee, I think maybe again he wasn't caught there, but the referee's just making sure, don't need this, lads. Yeah, he's probably just putting his mark down early. He probably could have easily played on there, but you know, he's just making his mark, letting him know what he what he stand for and what he won't. I just were saying there, um, I mean, North City going into the match maybe as favourites, but uh, I mean, that's because they've got the sort of big name players. But um, I think the word has to be said for a clever start. You, 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 it's all about good bringing in, bringing. In good players but you have to have a manager to mould them as a team and he's certainly done that over the last year and a half two years no doubt about it and I mean they were here last year they're back this year again so that's a sign of a good team down at Fern walking hard there trying to get the ball off the Orchard rear guard but just too many too many men back yeah I mean the two big guys at the back as I mentioned Christopher Haven earlier on you've got Declan Allister who was formerly a centre forward he's back in their centre back he's a, he's a big fella so I mean they, they, they're going to find it hard to get past him especially if Philip Hughes is, is hounding all over the place but he needs a bit of support with him a bit of work Peter there by Bestwick there, chance there, but tackles are going in hard here, Gareth. So 
Yeah, he's Declan Alistair, they mentioned there, it was a strong, strong challenge. Well, that's a, a throw in for Bestbrook, or for Archer down in the, beside the lines, man, there, so Carville walked hard down in that line. For a bit of strength there yeah. by Bestbrook. Feeney was pushed off the ball, probably a bit easier than he would have liked there. What I like about it, Gareth here, they're playing, trying to play the ball along the ground, which is yeah, I and mean they're pretty good. They're two, they're two, the two football sides. I mean, I think a little Cormac League's maybe wrongly accused sometimes of uh, playing lot, playing lo long ball football. But uh, when the two teams are trying to play football, especially that the wind you mentioned earlier on, it, it, it suits to play the ball on the ground. Oh yeah, but I mean, will it have an effect? What do you think? Uh, the wind, it, it, it possibly may do set pieces, but really the way the two teams try and play football, it shouldn't have much of an effect if they keep trying to play the way they normally play. Then, you know, I think they should be, I think it should be safe enough. Just keep the ball on the deck. Again, pushed in towards Carvel. An opportunity for Archer down along the line. Great bit of defending by Bestbrook. Well, that boys went hard for the ball there, and the ball is broken out. It was very unlucky there from Gareth Hughes, and with the well to charge it down, but it just actually just turned around. He didn't know where the ball was and spun up in the air. Very cagey open. Yeah, think. well, the first eight minutes is sort of nip and tuck, and uh, everybody's sort of afraid maybe to do things. Yeah, I think it's just everybody's sort of getting a few touches on the ball and just getting settled, as I said earlier. Um, that's all you can do really in these early early passes to play. Ball's broke out towards the middle. An opportunity for Bestwick to push it forward, and the ball goes away over the far side, but it's broken out there by Alistair. Pushed it up in the air, down along the line, so an opportunity for Archer over on the far side. Back inside there to Lee Feeney. Man that played for Rangers, he played for Linfield as well, Gareth. Yeah, I mean, he's won, won trophies all over the place, he played at the highest level, so he knows what he's doing. It's a great bit of football there, but well, Bestbrook have to push that one out there. A little bit of panic in the Bestbrook rear guard. Yeah, still a wee bit of nerves. I think both teams are trying to go up, doesn't matter how many times you play it, played in these sort of occasions, you still get nervous. I'm sure. That's a great ball in by Marky, great ball in, out comes the keeper. Ruddy pushes it out, and that was an opportunity there for Archer. But Bestbrook on the attack on the far side, the ball has come in. An opportunity, but the ball is given away there. Just maybe a little bit panicky there, Gareth. Yeah, it's the final ball, I think. I mean, both teams are doing well until they get the final third, but it's Bestbrook on the attack now. So Bestbrook have an opportunity. A good ball in towards the middle would be a, an ideal ball, but he heads towards the corner. Ben Trainer. But again, Archer comfortably. Defend that one and push the ball out. So it's a throw in for Bestbrook, more or less in the middle of the field. Yeah, you can see. I was just looking as the ball came down for the throw in there. Orchard are pretty much playing sort of Decky Carvel up front on his own, but he's supported wide by Stephen Daly and Keith Johnston. And I mean, that's a three pronged attack. There's a great ball inside, but again, well defended by Orchard. But an opportunity for the first strike for Bestbrook on goal, and it's hit hard. Very unlucky. And that's a great effort. Very unlucky. Steve, Stephen Matthews are. Um, he didn't have much time to, to, shoot, to change his feet and get the shot away, but it was a good effort and just over the bar. Yeah, young Stephen Matthews, and when you look at the young Stephen and when you look at Ben Trainer, the, the two opposite ends of the, <laughs> the equation. You don't get a man more experienced in Carbon League football than Ben Trainer, um, when he's played at the highest level as well. Uh, when you're in, I think he was at Cliftonville at one point, but he's been he's a, he's a Bestbrook legend. Well, now, you know. there's, there's no doubt, and that was, a, that was a good chance for Bestbrook there in the 10th minute. Gareth. Yeah, I mean, there hasn't, been, there hasn't been too many chances in the opening uh, sort of 10, 10 and a half minutes here. So that was just more, uh, more of a snapshot, but you know, uh, maybe that might settle Bestbrook a wee bit. I think they were starting to pass the ball a wee bit uh, better just in the run up to that chance, but if they can just get this the final ball, so it's probably killing both teams at the minute, but it's very early days yet, you know. Yeah, and it's very congested, it's very tight. The two teams have put a high line. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it Price, that wasn't a great kick out by Price, but it worked. It worked, is right. Archer have it, and it's with Markey. Chips it up in the air. So Dacky Carvel heads towards the corner, and he's going to check inside. He was trying to knock the ball off him, but he goes after it again. Great bit of work by Carvel, but that's good defending. But yeah, again, Sean's another corner. Sean Cinnamon Dexon defending because uh, I think Dacky Carvel probably had the had the legs on him in terms of pace. Um, but he recovered well to see the corner. But you just need to be tight from this set piece here, best. And of course, when you mention Cinnamon, the, the the other Cinnamon lad that got injured, and yeah. you know, right. just bad timing, I suppose, so last week. Yeah, very unfortunate. Um, I mean, it would be good for the, the two brothers to be playing the final, but it's well, cookie crumbles as. Uh, 
Well, it happens, so it's grip corner. The ball is in over the far side. Well, that was just chance. And oh. Oh, well, he's got the back of the net. I think, uh, yeah, I think that was Stephen Daly on the far side. Um, not too sure, I just can't see his number. But uh, yeah, best for field of deal was only back's corner. Kevin Carr just got underneath the ball to, and tried to clear it. But the ball could have gone anywhere. It was very unlucky. But he puts in a sweet corner. He, he just drops it in right right on the danger zone. I mean, Johnny's, again, I keep mentioning players that have played at the highest level of the country. Johnny's another one. and um, He's a great left foot, always has since his uh, underage playing days. So Ruddy pushes this one out towards the middle. Again, Marky jumps up uncontested. It's with Marky. Heads it in again. Out comes Bennett. Bennett pushes it down. As I said earlier on, they were trying to keep it in the ground now. It's sort of keeping up. He's with the heads. So the ball is broken back. An opportunity for Bestbrook to defend tightly. That looked like a handball there, but a little bit panicky in the defence. But the ball goes over on the far side, right towards the middle. Trainer pushes a nice one along the ground, but cut out by Markey. There's a chance for Bestbrook to break because they opened the play out well there and just uh, the final ball just once again just didn't materialise. Again, they're just a wee bit slow in getting support up to the man up front. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing uh, Philip Hughes up front and his own, Philip will work all day long for you, but he, he needs some. You need else. support. He, he needs runners beyond him. A little bit of a push in there. I thought the referee would have given the free, but he's let the play go on. Great ball in, the ball's coming in over the top, but beats everybody and goes out. It was unlucky, it was good forward play by Jack McCarville there. He showed, showed the strength he has um, to hold off playing trainer, and then he got away from him. Just again, unfortunately, just the, the final cross just wasn't quite on the money. Well, for all, all, the, all the possession that Art should have, Bestbrook had the best chance. Well, they probably had. I mean, they said Stephen Daly had that chance shortly after Stephen Matthews' chance. Um, I think were probably a bit even, but uh, Orchard probably. I think they do a bit more with their possession then they might, they might create a few few more chances but seem to be leaving the very open midfield there's no doubt I thought <laughs> I think everybody thought that was a free there by Marky but referee has indicated that it's a throw it's a throw in so Archard have a throw in right in the centre of the field just underneath us here throws it long well a couple of men looking to know where it went in the dark corner there blocked down referee has indicated there was hands there so And I think, um, I mean, it's sort of shown earlier on, we're just in the first quarter of an hour, it's just coming up now, Damon, and, uh, you know, while the Orchard may have been getting in his favourites, but in a lot of people's eyes, it shows that it's not going to take too much to win this game, it's very, very tight and tense at the minute. I, I would say at best, we're probably we'd be the happiest, you know, they're probably their plan was to keep Orchard, you know, tight the first 15, 20 minutes and see how, the, how it pans out. Yeah, they've certainly done that, it's just that one chance from, from Stephen Daly, which came from a set piece, so, I mean, but, uh, yeah, with all the possession, Orchard have had the uh, best record kept them to the right of it so far. Dermot Fern, so that was a daisy colour to Fern, wearing his nice new blue boots for the final. I think most, they must, must all think they're Louis Suarez with the blue boots. <laughs> yeah, well, that seems, seems to be the fashion nowadays, you know. You have to, if you're wearing multicoloured boots, you have to be a good footballer. Well, you, you, if you wear coloured boots and you don't perform, you, you definitely stand out in the crowd, there's no doubt. But Q's got a wee bit annoyed there that he, he knocked that ball out. Another throw in for Archard. And Gareth, that ball's coming up beside us here, and we can nearly reach out and kick it. Yeah, it was good. Uh, Anthony Bennett, our left back, had that ball out. He's got a good steady start. Uh, not, not, not too much. Not too much to get past him, um, and he's done well when he ha he's had the ball. So, um, probably one of one of the best with better performers so far. No doubt, and a very, very strong player. But Mark, he's been doing a lot of throw-ins along this line here. So maybe the wind, the pull of the stand, is pulling the ball this way. Who knows? Well, there. Slightly late there. The on referee. On <laughs> He's dead. No more. Oh, the Nick. That was Good hard. referee in there. Again, man going hard for the ball and he didn't pull out. So Yeah, I mean, I don't think there was nothing malicious in that tackle. It was just slightly mistimed. That was, that, that was Anthony Bennett who we'd just been talking about as well. Well, we'll see now. This is a well within re Feeney's range. Knows. And I would say he, he'll be looking to well, plant this one on target. What do you reckon, Sick, Gareth? Or will he float it in? I think he might. Because the wind, you know, the winds are. And yeah, he might just float it in. There's a, there's a big gap there. He's, just put, put it yeah, he's going to float it. Oh, he's he's played play short. Uh, Johnny Black. That was shot. I think I was a wee bit optimistic there from, from Johnny. He was a good 35 yards out there. He can hit them. But I think, you know, a wee bit optimistic. Which might not give it a go in the early stages. And it was probably worth a, a, a chance to go for a goal there because with the breeze and uh, maybe Bestwick sort of sitting thinking well, he's, he's not going to do this. It was an opportunity, but they went short and then the ball went wide. So kick out by Connor Ruddy. So 
Goal kick. Was unlucky. Oh, that ball Decent effort from Declan Carver. Yeah. Again, it came from another tower and Chris Haven header at the back. Um, ball ended up coming through to Declan Carver. He's got that instinct where he'll have an early shot, just maybe trying to catch Ruddy off, off balance, but not this time. Yeah, and, and it was a good enough. I mean, if it had it badly bounced in front of the keeper, who knows, particularly under lights, you know. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I mean, it's one of those things. You take, take, as I say, if you don't That's buy your Feeney. ticket, you don't win the lottery. That's it. Feeney just drilling a little pass right through the eye of the needle there. But it's cleared by Bestbrook. But Bestbrook, when they're coming out of defence, they're giving the ball away, Gareth. And they're working very hard to try and get it back in the middle. And it's not happening. But there's a lovely bit of class there by Feeney. And he's just going to push it inside again. An opportunity for Carvel. He spins round. Can he get the shot in? He spins. A great shot. Blocked. Oh. And Gareth. A chance for yeah, Orchard. It was a fantastic ball through by Feeney. It was actually Stephen Daly that picked up the ball in the back of the goal. And it's a six-yard box. Um, it was an excellent turn. Um, and a, a, a good save by Conor Ruddy but uh, Keith Johnson with a follow up he know himself he probably should have done better there well he uh, should have got it on target that's for sure he certainly should have got it on target I mean yeah, the keeper struggled if he gets it on target so and Keith the uh, player of his calibre the level he's played at he'd be very disappointed there again the ball is pushed up in the air and headed down by Bennett Cinnamon gives it inside so handball there the referee says play on the line it's over the line so it's a throw in for Bestbrook that underneath is here and Dermot Fern again Great ball down the line. That's a referee and the linesman agree with us. Gareth, that, that is a throw in for Bestbrook again. They're getting closer to the goals. Yeah, Stephen Matthews, there, um, we just noticed slightly before there, when Hughes came out to get the ball, he, he, he ran beyond him. So that's what Bestbrook needed to do more of, I think. Great throw in there, an opportunity. The it's broke down, up in the earth, bouncing about. Uncharacteristic poor control there, I believe, Feeney. <laughs> uh, once again, I mean, uh, look at it, I've mentioned him a few times already. There's another Chris Haven clearance to the overhead kick. Uh, I mean, he's going to, he, I think, he, if he keeps playing, playing the way he's playing, I mean, at best, but they're still continuing to play one up front. They'll find a very hard to get past the over alone. Never mind Dak and Alistair as well. Well, there's no doubt about that. Like, and I suppose both defences are playing really, really well here. I'm putting the, you know, like, but, but Bestbrook had one one chance a goal and we wouldn't call that last effort an effort like you know no, I mean, and I think I just noticed in the Peter Markey taking cold kicks for Joe Price I wonder if Joe carrying a wee knock it's, it's, it's sort of, that's usually the reason why a like, field player takes the goal kicks right, Bennett stops that one back to and Dermot Fern the ball stays in play, an opportunity for best, but that's a great ball inside, spins round, gets a shot on target, well, handy one for Joe Price. Yeah, that was uh, Stephen Lockern pushing up there, I think, um, he, if he had looked round, he had a man free at the edge of the box, but he went for the shot, he possibly could have laid it off. But again, great to control in the middle of the park by Archer, and it's out to Mark, he has a lot of space down.
Orchard. Pushed long down along the line. An opportunity for Orchard in the carnival. But this time, Bresbrook stand tall and defend well against the strike force of Orchard. An excellent defend there by Kevin Carr. Pushed away over on the far side, so trainer along the ground. An opportunity for Bresbrook to just needs to beat his man, but pushing it back. Bresbrook very, very steady here in the build-up, Gareth. Great and ball inside, ball. coming across, but I probably would have been better just trying to dink it up in the air. Yeah, I mean, I suppose I'm not too sure who that was. Brian Ferguson, the um, best captain. Um, I mean, sometimes if you get that ball right just in between the, the back four and the keeper, then you, you cause a bit of a problem. But unfortunately, it's just a wee bit too close to the fan. But we've got a corner out of it. Um, corner of a throw in, I'm not too sure, actually. But he has a throw in. Throw in, yeah. You know, from Dermot Farron. So maybe we can make something like this. So, of course, it's come inside but again great defending there by Archard in the breakout of speed and Bestwick got caught here so an opportunity for Archard Carvel's on the outside good ball inside over the top but good defending there by Bestwick but well the two of them wait for the ball to come down an opportunity for Archard this is another chance here well you were stretched there Gareth? Yeah, um, I think he chunks his ball in there. The, I think it was Tucker McCann. And the ball was just a wee bit behind him. I mean, a, per, a slightly better ball there from Keith. And that was 2 0. It would have been 2 0, yep. And Bestwick would have been in serious, serious trouble. But it's still one zip to Archard here. About 30 minutes into the first half. Again, Bestwick maybe giving the ball away too handy in the middle of the park. Yeah, they just. They just need to get their foot in the ball. I mean, they're, they're winning it reasonably well, but they're just uh, two passes and it's back to Orchard. It's a hefty tackle there by Ben Trainer. Hefty bit fair. But there, ha there has been some strong tackles that's gone in this last five minutes. Yeah, I, th I think that's what, that's what you expect. Yeah. You, know, you expect in the cup final, two teams who really want to pick up silverware at the end of the, end of the game. But again, when we look down here and we see, like, Bestbrook, you know, they're not getting the ball down to their forward men. No, it's um, they actually have pushed sort of push push men up whenever they do get the ball up there. But it, it's not the final ball isn't coming through. Um, I mean, the one probably extremely good final ball has been this game led with goal that was from Lee Feeney. Um, if best but sort of had Lee Feeney in the middle of the pitch, then you know he could possibly could possibly could have got Philly Hughes away. Philly Hughes only had one chance. He's going to score. There's no doubt. And then Stephen Daly there, he sort of kick that ball away in frustration the referee just says okay don't be doing that anymore yeah well it's good I mean we've already talked about Neely he hasn't got his cards out of his pocket doesn't want to get them out too early great ball in there by Bennett dropping down breaks out but Joe Price just says leave it and I'll pick this one up very start at the back Orchard best worker just getting no change out of no, the they're getting Chris here and whatsoever the, the, the back four of Orchard are superb here and the referee has given a free against the Orchard man over on the far side there with Johnny Black playing in a, an unorthodox left back position, he's used to playing the centre midfielder or wide in the left the midfield. But uh, I mean, he can fill in left back easily. He's, he's, he's a top quality player. But best with Bill from the middle of the park trying to get the goal back. But again, Gareth, you know, ball given away unnecessarily. Yes, it's it's we bit cheap to give away possession, best but but it, it only takes that only takes that one one pass, you know, and. Particularly again, a team like Archer with the the, the 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 ability and the skill that they have out there, you just do not want to be giving the ball away. Yeah, you, you you can't be giving the ball away. I mean, possession nine tenths of the law, I think, as the saying. So you need to keep a hold of the ball. You need to you need to try and work something. You need to not get frustrated so quickly. Well, Bestwick have an opportunity here. This ball's going to be floated in now, Carl. So an op an absolute chance for Bestwick in a good position. Great ball in over the top. Price punches it out. A chance, and there's a great strike. Oh. It was an excellent, uh, an excellent effort from uh, Stephen Lockern. Um, with Dermot Farron threw the free in, and I think uh, he was one of the crowd of players. And he's not the biggest Joe, but he got up well and punched it, punched, punched it out the edge of the box. But it was a decent effort there with Stephen Lockern. I mean, you know, a couple, couple of yards to the left hand side, that could have been a whole lot different. Yeah, I think it might have been, uh, it might have been in the back of the net if it had been in target. But it'll probably give Bestbrook a little bit of uh, enthusiasm for the end of the half. But we have to say that Archer aren't controlling everything that Bestwick's throwing at them. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that, that as I said there a minute ago, they look very, very stout at the back. Um, you know, they're winning everything in the air. Uh, the two chances Bestwick have had have been sort of two snapshots from, from the edge of the box, whereas when Orchard have created chances, they've, they've cut Bestbrook open. So um, I don't think Bestbrook can rely on scraps um, the whole 90 minutes, you know. Well, as you say that, the ball's in a gaggle of players over on the far side, but 
Bestwick, well, they've got it back and they're trying to trying to walk the ball. Stevie Matthews trying to get the ball out, but an opportunity for Bestwick inside. The referee has indicated that that's a hand, and we've got a free for Bestwick. I think that's probably Neil Cousins' first mistake of the game. There, uh, he could have played the advantage. Steve Matthews was through there. Uh, well, he was, he was through the edge of the box and probably had a shooting chance. Where he opted to call it back, he probably he probably admitted himself. He maybe shouldn't have blown as quickly as he did. Well, the Bestwick lads are having a wee discussion. What are we going to do here? Are we going to go for goal? But it's probably a wee bit too far out, Gareth. Yeah, well, you just don't know. I mean, uh, Steve Matthews really had one effort, um, a stinging effort just over the bar from the edge of the box. The way he's stepping back here... Uh, it looks as if he's going to go for he it. He might just be having a go, yeah. And that's what he's going to do. But again, Correct. well defended there by Archard. Ball broken out. But again, ball given away in the middle of the park to Archard, and Archard's coming out with the ball back down this time to Carville. Carville come out, gather the ball up, but it's been broke off, and Bestwick defend that one well. I think if you look at that free kick chance, um, when the ball was cleared down, and I think it was hooked back up by uh, Anthony Bennett, you could see five or six Orchard players coming streaming out. They're well drilled to, to, to get, back, uh, get back out and get on, get on the counter attack. Whereas Bestwick a wee bit sluggish. Yeah, clever, clever looks like he's got the Orchard City well drilled in their set pieces and uh, hit, hit teams in the counter attack. Ball's up in the air, knocked down. So Orchard with Haven pushes us up in the air, coming down, headed back out again. Well, two Bestwick men run into each other there, but. They get very, a wee bit lucky there, Gareth Hughes and Brian Ferguson, a bit of miscommunication. Way over by Lachern. On the far side, Stephen Lachlan checks inside, but trying to get the ball. Well, to get the ball back again. Lachlan was a wee bit lucky there. Again, Ards are putting a lot of pressure in the middle of the field, and Bestwick the opposite direction. Bestwick are not doing that, Gareth. Yeah, they're very hard working side. Orchard um, said, you know, clever start in his playing day. It was a very hard working centre forward. Um, I think he expects us, at least he expects out of his own players, you know, and they're certainly showing that tonight. Very, uh, a big hunger for the game, a big appetite for it. Uh, they're, they're looking they're comfortably settled in this game now. Well, Bestwick give that ball away, and Marky is doing a lot of work along the sideline here, and he's coming down the line every time, and he's sort of coming out, and he's not being contested, he's just given, well, he's given 40 or 50 yards to run with the ball. Yeah, I mean, Peter Marky likes to likes to dribble with the ball, I mean, he can play equally at home midfield as he is right back, but a um, very fit player, um, a steady player, and you give him opportunities to get forward, he might create something. Well, Carville has the ball at his feet, he tries to get it into Haven, ball's broken out, but again, Bestbrook have a chance here, but well, the foot was up there. The referee has said that's a free, but they take the qu well. The ball was rolling there, so probably best we're looking up because they give the ball away. Yeah, they'll get another go at it. Um, so we've got a high feet there from Stephen Wiley. Um, was a, was a foul a, a referee in Europe certainly gives. Sometimes you don't see him in the English Premiership, <laughs> but uh, you see him in the Caribbean League. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we see some of the referees in the Premiership and the European Champions League, you sort of be scratching your head and saying, "Where do they get their badges from?" But who'd want to be a referee, Gareth? I have it. to say, Neil Cousin here has been superb tonight. Yeah, I think he's going to be made that one, made that one slider. Uh, we probably could have played advantage, but you know, be, be harsh to criticise him for that. A lot of Dermot Fern on the ball but again. Best with giving it away as they get up towards the danger zone, and Ben Trainer again. Ben is doing great work over on the far side, but Bestbrook. I just feel that they're giving the ball away too easily in the middle of the park. Yeah, they, I mean, they just haven't got settled yet. Um, they're just, they're, as I said earlier on, they're not getting any change out of uh, the Orchard back four. Um, just as long as the frustration doesn't set in, we're going to keep plugging away. It's only 1 0, there's still a long time to go. Yeah, but Fern gives that one out to Bennett, and Bennett's stretching. Bennett puts it down along the line again. Gareth, as we said earlier, down to nobody. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of a bit of a wasted ball. I mean, if you've got, if you've got to play the ball forward, you, you need to find a man. The best we've really done that, and there's uh, just under 15 minutes to go in the first half. Well, there's a chance here for them. Well, the, probably in the Premiership, that might have been classed as a two-footed tackle, but yeah, he sort of he did go in a wee bit two-footed, but I think he kept his feet in the ground. So I think he, you know. Neil was happening. Oh, there's not a chance here, we chip, but Roddy with one. Yeah, that was a chance again, Gary. Yeah, Declan on the one. I don't, don't, don't bet it there. It was Keith Johnson played the ball in. Uh, I mean, you, saw, you see what he was trying to do. He was trying to lob Roddy, but just didn't get enough on it. Well, there's been no point trying to play tight football and fancy football in there. They've given the ball away. An opportunity for Mikey pushes it up in the air, and it's been headed out for a corner. Yeah, uh, Ben Trainer there wasn't taking any chances. I um, just made sure he put the ball in. There's not a chance here, we chip. Don't make a mistake with the, with the ball like that. Uh, so another chance for a set piece and 
Worcester just look like they're growing a wee bit of confidence. They're sitting back and hitting Bestwick on the counter attack and doing it very well. Yeah, I mean the Bestwick man lost his boot there, the blue boot, and they've taken the quick corner. Ball has flowed in and over the top, but defended well by Bestbrook. And Fern, well, he tries to check inside and slipped. An opportunity. But again, good defensive work there by Bestbrook, and that gave Stephen Daly had a chance there to get that across. Yeah, he did. Um, Anthony Bennett got out him very, very quickly. Um, it was an unfortunate step there from Dermot Fern, but got out him very quickly. Good defend. But again, the, the space down along this line here, Gareth, is. Well, you can nearly drive the Titanic down through it, there's that much space. When you drove a Titanic down, you'd probably crash at them, and you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, they, they do seem to be getting. They've, got, they've certainly got a game plan here, Orchard, and they look like they're executing it very well. Uh, they look, they so look very comfortable, Gareth, and everything they're doing. Yeah, they're, they're they're mopping up everything in the back, and when they do when they do see a chance, you know, they're trying to thread those three balls through. The 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 two wide men up along supporting uh, Declan Carville uh, and Keith Johnson and Stephen Daly are run the channels very well, and they're causing a few issues for Bestbrook. Well, Ruddy pushes this one out again. Well, Finney almost got that one. I think he was in Australia earlier on in the year. But that ball's gone out, so that's a throw for Archer just underneath us here. And Ferguson, well, he couldn't get us. He couldn't get near that one. But again, Margie has this one, and he's going to be throwing it long down the line. And that's exactly what he does. Carville is the target man. But Carville got one chance, and he put the ball in the back of the net earlier on. So it's 1-0 to Archer City. Yeah, it's just uh, just on. I think it's around ten minutes to go here in the first half, Damien. Um, I think Clifford Sturt will certainly be the happier of the two managers. Uh, well, Tom, the referee blew the whistle. We thought he was going to give a free, but he just said play on. I think Tommy Mooney will be maybe looking to get his team in at half time and just uh, have a wee chat with him. But again, Plus. you know, as we look out here again, well, they won the ball back there in the middle, so that's pretty good. But giving the ball away too easy in the middle of the park. But this is a chance for Bearsbrook. Fern has the ball under his foot. He looks round and push a grip all the way over on the far side. But again, well, well marshalled by Archer. Yeah, Chris, Chris, Chris Haven once again. He hasn't. I don't think he's been beaten in the air yet this match, uh, and he's up against one of the best forwards in the air in the league, and, and Philip Hughes. So, well, we're just waiting for the flag to go up there and went up. The referee's playing on. The referee has indicated a little bit of a push there by. Carvel, I think. Yeah, pushed by Carvel, though. Um, I mean, Kieran Cummins on the far side, the assistant on the far side, had his flag up for a Bestbrook offside before the ball was clear, but he spotted it now, so. And he still got the flag up, so. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be a free kick out, Orchard. Oh, well, the referee has given the offside, so. Yeah. I mean we thought it was a free, but just before that, I mean, there was there was a, there was a couple of decent passes there. Um, with Brian Ferguson, I think, linked with uh, Gareth Hughes, I think. Uh, you know, the ball eventually came in from Dermot Fair, and it was just uh, Chris Haver was just easy when it in the air. At best, we're going to play balls, and they got the need need, need to start challenging for them a wee bit better. Yeah, and that's exactly what we've been saying all along. You know, they need to be getting on the ball. They need to be getting our players on the ball. They're giving it away too easily. Yeah, I mean, it's just about stringing a few passes together. I mean, they're certainly not out of this game by any stretch of the imagination. Well, if that, if that was Park de France tomorrow, that would have been called a, a Gary Owen there. <laughs> so, Fern pushes this one right in the middle. That's good work by Fern. But again, Gareth, ball given away, and Archer come out in the middle of the park. Keith Johnson's away here. He's light, lightning quick. Absolutely flying down the far side. And Carvel's calling for it in the middle. The ball is up in the air. Carvel's coming for this one. That was a little bit of a push there. Yeah, I mean, he saw what uh, Keith Johnson is probably best at there um, for Richard White and the left. As soon as he turned these away, there's very few players in this pitch are going to catch him. Uh, the ball was just a wee bit, wee bit loose and sort of forced Deggy, Deggy Carvel into the foul. So he's probably a wee bit of a maybe a semblance of a chance there is lost. Well, Ruddy, he's been on the ball a fair amount of time here, the goalkeeper from Bestbrook. But this is a chance for Bestbrook. Little ball along the deck, but again, very comfortably dealt with in the back by the rear guard, Christopher Heron of Orchard. But again, Gareth, the space that Archer have in the middle of the field, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, they have a, they have a lot of space. Um, they're, they're getting time to pick out their pass. You give Lee Malik Leaf any time, he's going to pick out a pass. And as soon as famous last words, as soon as I say that, he gives <laughs> the ball away. Uh, there's a free. The referee says, play on. <laughs> so, Carver's going to pull the trigger, and he hits this one. And a oh. super strike. Okay, Carver's second. Uh, about, 30, about 37 minutes. Uh, a hint of a foul. Their best players are campaigning for a foul, but... Referee uh, indicated it was just his first shoulder from Decky Carvel. It was his weaker right foot in the edge of the box. Um, Connor really had no chance. But again, you know, the ball given away reasonably handy enough by Bearsbrook. 
in the car with the danger man and every time he's on the ball Gareth he looks as if he's going to do something yeah I mean um, he had a lot of time and space where I think it might have been Sean Cinnamon and I apologise it was not Sean but uh, I think he might have slipped just on the edge of the box there uh, it gave Carville time to set himself um, it was a fair shot Roddy was very very close to getting it but it's very unlucky but uh, as you said they can't keep, they can't keep the players have stopped here for two balls on the pitch. Uh, Bedford can't keep giving the ball away. They're going to get punished like that. And they've been punished twice. And they could have been punished a couple of more times this first half. That's for sure. So the referee, he's going to drop the ball in the middle and Bestwick play it back. So, and they get back on again with the game. I think Tommy Mooney will be doubly disappointed. Um, he would have been happy to get his team in at half time at 1 0. Yeah, he would have been reasonably happy with that, Gareth. Yeah, they've got a, they've got a bit of a mountain to climb now. You just don't see Orchard relinquishing this. No, I can't see it either, unless something dramatic happens here. Putting a lot of pressure on the man in the middle with the ball. So, again, nearly giving the ball away. So this time out comes Ferguson. Ferguson pushes his way over the far side, the trainer. Trainer's trying to push the ball in the middle. But again, three Archer men standing in a row, waiting on the ball to come to them. Into Fern. Fern tries to push it on the outside of the foot. So... An opportunity for Bestwick to put a little bit of pressure on Orchard. Back to Fern. Fern goes one way and then goes the other. But again, Gareth, ball given away. Great defensive work there by Orchard, and the referee has spotted a little indiscretion. Yeah, it's just. A wee bit of frustration there, maybe. Yeah, I, think, I mean, it's just, uh, as again, it's said it all along, the first half, it's just that first, uh, or sorry, final ball for, for Bestwick. Um, I mean, and anything coming in tight, uh, Chris Haber, Declan Alistair, Peter Mark and Johnny Becker are, are tightening it up very, very well. There's a bit of defending there by Carr, pushes away over the far side to Trainer. Trainer pushes along the ground, an opportunity, but again, ball given away cheaply. But well picked up by Bestwick at the back. So Bestwick are playing nice, tidy football, but they're really going nowhere, Gareth. No, it's very the far side, they've nobody up front. It's very and then, deep. as I said, the ball comes away and given yeah. away. More of a hopeful ball from Ben Trainer to Darren Farr than anything else. And again, the amount of space down this right side, and Daly's got a load of space, pushed a lovely ball inside. It was an excellent ball there, but Stephen found himself in space. He waited for the runner and Keith Johnson. But I think Keith was just a wee bit too eager there to get the shot away, and he, he probably could have held it up a wee bit more. He'd look at Carville coming in behind him, or sorry, Thomas McCann maybe coming in behind him. But you know, he's getting chances. The Orchard Orchard just look very, very comfortable now at this moment in time. There's no doubt, and Orchard look very, very comfortable. Everything they're doing, you know, they look cool and collective under the ball. Yeah. But as I say, that the ball is put up in the air like a Gary Owen. But again, down on the deck and pushed along the ground. It's a great bit of work there. And Daly trying to get in back to Marky. Marky looks up and he's calling Carvel for the run. Carvel's waiting on this one, but that was just taken off Carvel's head there. It was a very clever ball, Marky. Yeah, and he sort of shaped as if he was going to play further left, and he did. Um, Carvel was just lurking in there behind Kevin Carvel. In fairness to um, Carr, he did, did very well, just to glance the ball out. There's a great ball in and pushed out there by the goalkeeper. So Bestwick defended rightly there. So they're down 2-0, rattling towards the end of the first half here in this Bestwick Cup Final 2014. The 45th year of this competition. Bestwick Products picked the first and second one up way back in the late 60s. But here in the showgrounds this evening, Archard City are up 2 to Bestwick. Bestwick 0, Archard City 2 Referee's indicated, could this be the first yellow card, Gareth? Yeah, it appears. I mean, I don't know whether that's been any worse than any of the previous challenges. Um, he seems to be getting this card out of the book, and I think it's uh, Johnny Black. He's going to yellow card there. So Johnny will need to watch himself for uh, you know the remainder of the match now. He's, uh, Have you picked up a yellow card there? I think he's just getting a yellow card there. Neil Cousins just about to vanish it. I'm not too sure whether it warranted yeah, a yellow yeah, card. But well, it was soft enough one, maybe. Yeah. You know? Considering that he, I mean, he's, he's let a few challenges go early on, which we thought that was, the, was the right decision, you know. But again, Bestbrook just put that one in along the top of the ground to no avail. And Carvel has an opportunity. 
a chance here. He tacks one way, but good defensive work there by the rear guard of Bestbrook. I think if you look at it, Bestbrook are shooting themselves in the foot. If they're not getting there, if they're not getting on the ball, if they're not keeping the ball, they've got to make them the most of their set pieces, and their set pieces have been very poor this season. Not nearly cost them uh, one ball, one ball out of defence, and Decky Carville was away there. Um, just good defending over Sean Sonneman. So Markey tacks inside, pushes a lovely ball in. Fino puts it out, back out this time to McCann. McCann slips it away over on the far side, and he goes up the middle looking for the return pass, an opportunity opportunity for Archit. Well, maybe we just took too much out of it there. Yeah, Keith Johnson, uh, which is like Gareth Hughes, the cover and sort of pick his pocket there. There's no doubt about that. Well, there's no quarter asked or given in this cup final here. But again, great bit of defensive work there by Bestwick. Have a chance with Fern. He's going to be pushing us away over on the far side. But again, the ball is just up on the air. Well, a chance, and then we have a chance there. That's a good goal, Gareth. Well, that's um, I mean, that's a bit of a shock. I think it was a wee bit of a, a wee bit of a mistake there with Joe Price. Um, I like Stephen Locker to come in. It was Dermot for and it, he looked to be hesitating, Locker, but uh, so did Joe Price. And um, I think just ran across Joe, Joe Joe's path there, Stephen. I think Joe was waiting on the referee to blow the whistle, but it, there's an old saying in football, Gareth: you play to the whistle. And yeah. Bestwick, so Bestwick now that gives them a fighting chance. A super, a super goal there from Lachlan right at the end of the first half. So it's all the play for here in the second half. That's a massive boost for Bestbrook. I don't think you could really see that coming, to be honest. Um, but it, you know, it only takes a second to score a goal in football. So I think Tommy will just be wanting to, you know, get the boys in at half time, even though they've just scored. Get them in at half time. Get them talking to you and see if they can come back in this game. I'm very surprised that Orchard looked very comfortable. Well, that was yeah, that was a very comfortable first half for Archer and then a goal out of nothing probably a mistake from Joe Price you would say yeah, yeah I mean I think Joe will be disappointed there you see, he, he, he let Stephen Lockhart run across his path and got a bit uh, sort of got a bit, bit confused and with what was going on and uh, made a mistake forced the, I think the Bestbrook forced a mistake there. well that, yeah there's good work from Bestbrook but again a little bit of work here by Alistair way over on the far side he puts the ball out on the far side but Archer have settled down again here, and again the amount of space to get to take the ball inside with no. There's another great ball in, but they're not. Bestbrook standing off the man. Well, there's a free there. But the referee says no play on. Yeah, you look at that. The ball caught the Philip Hughes race around about five Orchard players, and he There's didn't, no have, he there, didn't one of one of his teammates was within 30 yards of him. You know that needs to change in the second half. Bestbrook are going to get in there this game. But you would see Bestbrook, Bestbrook centre field men would need to be pushing up. And they're standing off and they're not marking. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, they'll just need to tighten up a wee bit in midfield. Um, just a wee bit loose. I mean, I don't think it'll take mass, a, a massive amount of Bestbrook to maybe draw a level in this, but they just need to tweak a few things at half time. Tommy will want to get them in at half time. Just Good ball in by Markey, but again, well, he should have probably let that go for the keeper. Pushed up in the air. Fern misses that one. It's coming out this time to Philip Hughes. And, well, I thought it was kept in play underneath us here, but. The linesman says it's a throw-in for Orchard or for Bestbrook. Yeah, we just moved in the first half stoppage time here. Um, so I mean, there's still a chance for somebody else to get another goal at Bestbrook. If Bestbrook score for half time would be, uh, would be a, <laughs> a remarkable achievement. But uh, I just think uh, two experienced players are going at it: Peter Mark and Philip Hughes. Uh, they lot, they lot mince their tackles. They'll get stuck in each other for 90 minutes and shake hands afterwards. Yeah, and I mean that's 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 what we love about football, Gareth. But Price, we put a venom in that kick there. He pushes it long down the field. But Carville comes inside. But great again, well defended by Bestwick. But a little bit of a panic, kicked up in the air and given away to Archer over on the far side. So you know Archer, very comfortable. Feeney just offloads that pass. And again, you know. Archer look very, very comfortable coming with the ball, Gareth. Yeah, uh, they do. I mean, they won another corner there. Um, Johnny, Johnny Black's deliveries from the right hand side have been pretty good. Um, I think Keith Johnson's going to really take this one from the left. Uh, I'm sure Clifford Sturt will be looking for um, a side to bounce back and maybe uh, you know restore that two goal gap there at half time. Could this be the final play of the half where Archer have another corner this time on the far side? So the referee has blown his whistle. A good delivery is required here from March. A wee bit of pushing in the middle, but well defended by Bestwick. The referee's looking at his watch. He's a probably, well, he's about to blow it, but he hasn't blown it yet. So, high ball in, two or three Archer men. Great bit of defensive work there by Bestwick, but a chance for Daly. Ball's coming in, and Ruddy, well, he put his other hand. Time, Gareth. That was a chance. Yeah, um, Ruddy did very well there. It was a looping header, I think, from Dak and Alistair from uh, Stephen Daly's cutback. Um, 
he, he was just sort of looking up in the air and Ruddy did very well just to make sure he pushed over the bar so well as we say that the half time score here in the best of cup final 2014 is two to Orchard City and one to Bestbrook Bestbrook well Stephen Lockern got a lovely one on Joe Price Joe panicked a wee bit and Lockern took in got the ball in the back of that so it's two to one so Gareth we're looking forward to a cracking second half yeah I mean I think um, it's all the play for now I mean I think if uh, you know you, you wouldn't have expected um, Bestbrook to, to score that goal to get back at 2-1 but I mean it gives them a fighting chance in the second half I still don't see past Orchard to be honest with you I think they're too much quality in their ranks to, uh, to try and let, and let the goal slip I know Clifford start will be, be, be irate at half time at conceding that goal because it didn't look like conceding for the, the vast majority of the first half so he'll be looking to, the, to sort of make sure they tighten up no more silly mistakes second half and I think they have enough about them just to go and uh, to eat e the victory but I mean that's not any disrespect to uh, Best Break United they'll, they'll, they have all the experience on their side Tommy knows what he's at Tommy Mooney so y you know all the play for it I still expect Orchard to go and win it but you know it's just a th there's still a, still a big 45 minutes to come here big 45 minutes so we'll be back uh, we're going to go and take a little uh, half time break here try and get the, the hands and get the blood warm, warmed up here so we're just going to take a little break and don't go away we'll be back to take the second half live on Destiny's Neary Soccer Special here tonight Indeed, in his hip pocket, Robbie Casey. Robbie, you're very welcome to Destination's live soccer special here tonight. Thanks very much, Damon. It's great to have you here for the second half, Robbie. Thanks to Gareth McCullough for his first half analyst. A man was absolutely fantastic. So you have a hard act to follow here. You yeah, have a hard act to follow, Gareth. He's very, uh, very knowledgeable, I might say. <laughs> well, the goal came at the right time for Bestwick, Robbie. Yes, it did. Uh, just for half time, they always say it's a, it's a good time to score, but I think it was a. It was a goal or nothing really, the ball in the box and it's a, it's a poor mistake by Joe and he'll, uh, he looked to uh, make amends for that to be sure, you know. There's no doubt and we did say earlier on and we spoke with Gareth earlier on in the first half as well, you know, Bestwick have to put pressure on the midfield players of Orchard, particularly feigning that because he's just stroking the ball around with greatest of ease. Yeah, I think so. I think you've just hit the nail in the head there if they, they're pushed the back four up and out 10 yards and push the midfielders on a bit. Uh, not give Feeney so much room as you say. He's absolute quality on the ball, and you know, give a man he got space, he'll, uh, he'll open you up. Carr put that one high in the air and was headed out by Ben Trainer. But again, Bestwick, you know, they give the ball away every time they're coming out with with it from defence. Hard out tackle there, but foot comes in. The referee has indicated that that's a free there, Robbie. Yeah, I think it was a free. Um, it was a, a robust challenge, I might say. So it's two to one in favour of the men from Orchard here in the cup final. The new cup will be presented tonight. Rowie, forty-five years ago, the, the first final, the Bestwood Cup final was played. So Stephen Locker underneath us will be trying to drop this on the top of the head. Well, it was a poor enough ball in, but he comes after it for the rebound, checks along the ground, but. I think that's been a feature of the game too, the, the quality of the ball in the box from, from set pieces in particular, you know, it's they're, uh, they're falling 10 yard shots, not giving the, the forwards an opportunity to get on it. So, But again, Ben Trainer, a long, long history of soccer in the area, is playing well, it's looking for an opportunity, but the ball goes in over the top, and this time it's with Locker and Locker and giving the ball away, but that was another chance there for Bears, but you know, and they need to be making them pay, Robbie. Yeah, they need to make them count because, I mean, uh, Ards have just picked the ball up and on the break now, so... So Ferguson gives that one, he looks for the return, he gets the return and he dinks it in, but that ball was given away. But the ball is broken nicely. Daly, well, taken out there, but the referee says that's a free, so he reaches for the card. Well, the Orchard man's down and... Yeah, it's big Daggy Carvel down there. Um, looks like he's taking a bad knock, but Daggy's a big strong man, he should get up and get on it now. Yes, still the ball, yes. So in comes a physio with the bottle of water to pour on the, the wound. Physio, manager, coach, bus driver, I'm sure the whole lot Cliff, he's out tenting the Daglin now. So. Well, as we say, Robbie, we have uh, the second half started here. Daki Carve is down injured and a good crowd has gathered here for the final. And it's great to see the final back in the showgrounds. It was back here uh, for the first time three years ago when Bestwick won that again, clearly Celtic. And it was the first time the game was played in the showgrounds for 25 years. I think it does make sense to have their your uh, showpiece cup final in the, in the biggest uh, ground in the area, yeah, and you can see by the turnout tonight yeah, it means a lot to the people in Uri. So um, long may it continue. Becky Carvel looks to be under a wee bit of pressure here. They're calling for stretchers and everything, but I think he might be all right. Hopefully he'll be all right. 
Of course, the Argent manager heading out to see how Daki is. But Robbie, uh, it, it, it brings great memories back to you here, sitting here the night, watching what's going on, looking to be out on the field. Yeah, funny. Uh, just a text clip he started today, just wish him all the best, and they were just chatting and talking, and just his wish I was 10 years younger, you know, so. I know he said he was just 20 years younger, Billy so he's a bit older than me. But there, Robbie, the there's no doubt that urge to play football, so it never leaves you. You know, you, you, you know, when you step onto the field, it's just a different ball game, right? It is, yeah, but I mean... No matter what level you're playing at, um, whatever age you are, there's a um, there's a winning streak in you. When you're playing five aside with the, the lads, or there, there's a charity match coming up now for the over forties, and we've been training it along with with Pat Quinn, and it's it's very competitive to be quite honest. So, you know that urge never leaves you. Brilliant, and of course Daki's down injured, so hopefully Daki Carvel will be grand. Uh, a lot of uh, club club mates from Carrick Cruppen playing on uh, against each other here tonight, Robbie as well. Yeah, it might be knocking down too well with the Carrick Cruppen lads. So I don't know who it was that caught him in the tackle. Maybe one of his own so teammates had done it. Hopefully, Daki will be grand, and of course, you'll pick up all the results on Destination Yuri's Soccer Special tonight and tomorrow afternoon, the Saturday Sports Show, where we bring all the the results live at approximately quarter past five on a Saturday afternoon. Destination Yuri bringing local sport right into your television, Robbie. Good to see it, isn't it? Um, you know, it's something that was never done before, so I mean, it's fantastic for, for the area to have something, I guess, to, to, to tune into and having the touch of a button now, so. Yeah, and of course, uh, in the in the coming weeks, uh, we will be launching a, a new, uh, well, a new uh, piece of equipment out to the public where you can actually just put it onto your television and press a button on Destination Yuri will be will be on your television in their front room or your back room or whatever, Robbie. So uh, bringing your live local sport right into the living room. Fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant, I have to say. You know, fair play to Destination Yuri. They've, they've got, got involved in everything that's local with Yuri. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a fantastic gesture by them. So. And then, of course, last week we had the Sports Awards. Taki Carver looks to be under... A, uh, isn't he? Yeah. He is indeed, and he's coming off here, which is a big blow for Archard. Who's, who they got to come on? Mickey Green, possibly. So, it's unfortunate that Daki he maybe twisted the knee there, Robbie. It looks yeah, to it be. It looks like it's, um, I mean, it's, as he not laid the ball off, he was caught with a late challenge. So, um, as you say, he's walking a bit gingerly. I don't think he'll continue, to be honest. So, we wait. I don't think any substitutes has come in. So, Well, there's signals going across to the bench and different things. We don't know what's going on here, but hopefully Daki Carve will be all right. I haven't seen a substitute come in here yet. Maybe they just want to take him along the line here and see how he is. Yeah, it just looks like they're going to give him a couple of minutes to see does he does he shake it off. Uh, as you say, I can't see any substitutes out warming up. Well, as we look at this free, this is well within Feeney's range here. And yeah, <coughs> I think it's just about five yards, maybe too far for Freno. Um, but knowing you know, the, the class of the man has, he, he's liable to give this a go, you know. And he has, he's been just drilling passes left, right, and centre all evening, Robbie. Yeah, superb. He's a different class, to be honest, you know. Um, played against him, playing along with him, and, you know, he's just he is just a different class, and he's, he's just step above anything on the field tonight, to be quite honest. Well, he's leaving it. Well, we're waiting. There is going to be. Well, Carvel, no, he's still trying no. to say, is he okay? Maybe he's That's just right. a wee bit gingery. So, yeah. well, Finney leaves that one, and he leaves it to Marky. So, Marky's going to probably float it left here. There's a man ghosted up on the outside. A wee bit of decision making here between. Oh, it looks like he's going to go for it. He's going to go. Tucker. Tucker hits this one. Well, it's that's nearly like Seamus Keynes. Once it went far. On the internet. Seamus uh, she was supposed to be a few uh, tips to Orchard City. <laughs> Free takers during the week. <laughs> well, you have seen it, Robbie. Oh, I, have seen it. Uh, I haven't seen Seamus yet, but when I do see him, he's going to get a bit of grief over it. So. Well, thank God it happened in the holy season of Lent because he says he's going off free kicks for Lent. <laughs> well, Daggy Carvel is just coming back onto the field, so uh, in comes the, the spray. Maybe he just, well, it looks as if he got a clip on the ankle. Yeah, he's just a, it's a, as he let the ball off. He's, he's the, he was caught he was a challenge, so. Ball's broken in the middle, so pushed out this time by Alistair. But Bestbrook again, the ball is out over by the Paddy Power sign. So Carvel has rejoined the fray and he's, well, he's going a wee bit ginger, but I bet you a pound if this ball comes in near him, he'll be well like a little thing. <laughs> yeah, no right like. So Bearswick, well, the try and build from the middle, inside. Ball's gone long. So Ben Trainer's calling for the ball. But Bearswick have an opportunity here. But again, there's two men on the Bearswick man and he gives the ball away. 
great bit of work here by Archer Carver comes out and he well he gets caught in that one Gary Arnes is down below us here getting a wee bit excited but this time it comes into Johnson Keith Johnson Keith just drills a little pass inside to Wiley Wiley pushes the ball out to McCann and McCann just slips the ball back and then this time it comes all the way over this time to Jonathan Black Jonathan Black takes his time Push the ball along the ground. Well, that's a little bit of a push there. Looked like a free to me, to be honest. Yeah. Like yeah. So Daggy. Yeah, he's giving it. Carvel looked at Ben Trainer and Ben Trainer looked at Carvel and the two of them looked at the referee and the referee says it's a free. So we can't disagree with that one. But Jonathan Black will be floating this one in under the far side, towards the end edge of the penalty box. The one in favour of Archit. Well, that ball's hitting the left side of the foot. The keeper comes out, punches it out, but knocked down a chance for Archit. Hit along the ground, and the ball has gone in in the back of the net. And who is it? That man. <laughs> Carvel, the man who is injured. And again, Robbie, a goal out of nothing. Good nothing. It was a flight of ball in the box. Keepers came and punched it, but. Again, that's just a wee bit of class from Lee Finney, just to, to nod it out to the right back who's drilled it. And uh, Carvel was sharp on the edge of six, just to return it into the back heel, so great finish. Well, two minutes ago, he was hobbling along the line here, and we thought maybe he might be leaving the Vila play, he comes back on again, and puts the ball in the back, and that, that just absolutely destroys Tommy Mooney's team talk at half-time, Robbie. Yeah, I think it does. Um, you know, they, they, they pushed a bit the first five minutes, but as you said, Carvel had come on a bit gingerly, and, and you did say that the ball comes into the box or anywhere he'd be off like a lady so for a bit of he was, he was on the mark but again as in the first half the ball is given away in the middle part of the field and Black's on his own here but out comes Ben Trainer well great bit of defensive work there but men going hard for the ball in that one there so great few little hits there and there's a little afters but referee has indicated yeah, the linesman's linesman, giving yeah. a free there yeah, it was just a late challenge by Johnny Black as uh, uh, Billy Cruz had let it off Well, he, he hasn't. He's given the line it's ball. It looks strange. strange yeah, throw in. It looks to yeah. be a throw in. The ball has crossed the line. So, <laughs> I would say <laughs> Jonathan Black was lucky enough to get away with that, uh, Robbie. I think he was actually. Yeah, um, I'd actually thought he'd give it a, a free against Johnny to start with. But well, <laughs> there's a dis dissension in among the ranks of the fans here. <laughs> That's live football yeah, here on decision. soccer special on Destination Uri on St Patrick's weekend down here in the showgrounds. Where it's three to one in favour of Orchard City. They were beaten last year's final, Robbie, and they've made a statement here tonight that they we want this title badly. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, you know, I think what's driven them on from last year was that the hurt that they did have against Wimbledon last year. Um, so maybe he's used that in his team talk to, to push the guys on. They've certainly come out fired up. Well, this time the referee has decided that that definitely is a free right in the centre of the field. So the referee's not getting too excited. He's handling the game very, very well, Neil Cousins. So it's a free for Bestbrook right on the, well, more or less in the middle of the this centre circle, Robbie. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, for Peter Neil, you know, he's normally referees like to be a centre of attention, but uh, he's sort of anonymous tonight, so he's doing a great job, to be honest. So Archer have come out onto the edge of the box and they're holding a high line, so a good ball in by Bennett is required here, but well defended by Archer. And they're in with a chance to break here. The ball goes first time to Black. Black on the outside here. And Carvel cuts inside looking for the return. The ball comes in and Carvel's up. And this is another one. Four. And is this the Daggy Carvel show here? This evening goes for Daggy Carvel. Four goals for Archer City. And Robbie, I would say it's good night, Irene. I think it's game over now. Um, some fantastic break by Archer. Great uh, defensive header by Peter Markey in the midfield. And uh, it's a fantastic ball out to Johnsy who uh, cut inside the fullback. Put a great ball in the Carvel, who was brave of the chance to break here. The awards. ball goes first well, it was time an easy black, enough one to finish. I mean, on the you know, just here. headed in under no pressure. So, Daki Carvel, four goals in the cup final. Yeah. It's what legends and dreams are made of, Robbie. Yeah, well, you know, Daki's going to be hard listening now for the next week. So, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> and he works alongside me, so I'm going to have to get the cotton buds in. Well, there you go. He yeah. works in tally, tally, tally performers in one of them places, and uh, they were saying. Well, uh, I have a problem with my whatever my toaster, and he says, "Well, don't worry, I scored four goals in the cup final." Yeah, that's <laughs> it doesn't matter what the problems are now; just, it's going to remind everyone about it. So it's a throw in, and this time Philip Cuse. Well, Philip lets the ball run out again, so it's another throw. So Philip Cuse picks it up, 
gives it over to Ben. Ben knees that one forward, picked up to Hughes, and the ball comes out. And we're seeing with 13 and a half minutes gone in the second half. So great to have Robbie Casey, the, the local legend here from Newry, doing the second half. Gareth McCullough was there the first half. Great ball in by Ben Trainer. The ball's dropping in, but this time again, Archer with Feeney. Well, Feeney just steps back a wee bit. The ball's break, broke out on the far side, but Archer again defend very, very handy over on the far side. Break out of speed and it's a throw in for Bestbrook on the far side past the Paddy Parr sign. Well, if Paddy Parr could do them, well, he could do it like Dackey Carvel. Hey, what odds would Dackey Carvel be to score first four goals for Archer in the cup final here tonight, Robbie? Well, you're looking at a good 6 to 1 for Dackey for that one, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no doubt. And of course, Archer are sort of playing very casually along the line. Ben Turner comes down and just puts the boot through that one. But Robbie, as, as I look out here and I see Archer just cruising along here, I, I seen a great programme on last night, the great Arkle, the, the legendary racehorse from the 1960s, was, was, there was a great programme on last night and uh, how good that horse was, I'm not saying that Dacky Carvel is the Arkle of the soccer here, but I'll tell you, <laughs> he's not far away. So well, we have uh, you know, he's not far away, but I used to call him Devon Luck um, for his finishing, but uh, I think that's been proved wrong tonight. I see Lee Feeney just making way for uh, Michael Green now. So. so Michael Green comes in and you said he probably would be the first sub. So Feeney yeah. comes off and uh, he, he pushes his hand up to the crowd and the manager gives him a little tap on the back saying, well done, son. So that would nearly indicate to me that Archer think that this game wrapped up, Robbie. Yeah, I think they do. Um, Feeney's maybe running a bit of steam as well. So her fresh legs in the midfield do no harm. Again, Again they've brought on a, a, a quality player, Michael Green. So. But the showgrounds is in a wonderful condition tonight, Robbie. It, it's, it's, the pitch is like a billiard table. It is, and you know, the fair play the lads that's out there, they're trying to get the ball down and play. You know, they're maybe not used to the pitches, I guess, and fair play to, to Willie Young, the, the grounds man, he's done a fantastic job. And of course, Archer on the attack on the far side, well, just waltzing through the, the centre of midfield. But as I said, that well defended there by Bestbrook, and a chance for Hughes, but again, he just runs into a block wall. So, Orchard City are cruising here this evening in this cup final. Yeah, I think they are. I think there's more goals on the offering as well, to be honest. Jonathan Black, back to Mickey Green. Mickey's just come into the game. So, Orchard are very comfortable with the ball on the ground underneath us. And Bestbrook are going to be bringing in two substitutes. Two substitutes for Bestbrook will be PJ Qu Quigley and Justin Philpat. So, Bestbrook definitely having to make a change here three subs and David McCabe young David McCabe coming in so this is um, a big statement from Tommy Mooney but he yeah. needs to do something yeah he needs to do something looks like he's going to give it a go you might as well go out um, by giving it a go then sitting back and waiting for it to happen so it looks like he's going to make three changes three fresh legs in Stephen Larkin stole that ball gives the ball out on the outside this time to Philip Hughes Philip Hughes puts a great ball in but just took too much out and it sails over the bar so Bestbrook are bringing in three substitutes here. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have a go for it. Um, young lads, young PJ, I know PJ from old. Um, bit of pace about him as well, so it looks like they're going to try and get try and get at Archer here for the last half hour. Well, there's no doubt about that. So Ben Trainer leaves the field of play by the looks of it. Again, Ben, a great servant and a super footballer. Yeah, I've known Ben down the years. Um, I think you know, he's playing it right back tonight and he's, he's been challenged and to be honest he hasn't put a foot wrong the whole night so uh, as I say just going to make changes here and try and, and try and make a game but so Gareth Hughes has left the field to play as well and Dermot Fern and Dermot was on the ball a lot in the, in the first half yeah so he got on the ball a lot but you know there wasn't a lot done with it to be quite honest um, you know, it's interesting to see how three lads. It looks like he's going three at the back. Yeah. Well, he has to. He has to. He has to be a wee bit adventurous. And, uh, to, yeah. Well, there's a chance for Bestbrook here. Chance. Ball's broken down, and there we go. But this time, right chance. It's fantastic chances. I think it was his, his first touch. Should have scored. To be honest, should have hit the target at least. Well, there's no doubt. You got to be hitting the target, and if Bestbrook want to try and get something like this, they've got to be doing hitting the target. But Be Archer just playing, Adventures well they're just playing keep football, but as I say that, they give the ball away. Here. Oh there's a hard yes. tackle in the middle, Ball's but up to get the play on. Ball giving away, the referee's indicated there was a hand there, so 
Ball is kicked away, so could this be a booking, Robbie? Yeah, it looks like it. The referee's going to lay down the law here. So, this descent from uh, Mark, I think it is. I don't think Archer, you know, they're, 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 they're probably trying to play too much football. They did. They did the back, you know, that it was on just to play the ball up behind the Carvel and they cut inside and they're caught out now. They're, they're under pressure. Best with a free kick. And Marty picks up there. a yellow card. And of course, this has been the Daggy Carvel show here this evening. The ball's floated in a chance. But out comes Joe, and he's not going to make a mistake this time. So he just thinks the ball out this time to Green. Michael Green gives it across the ground. But playing, playing football on the ground, Robbie, trying yeah, to play. Need football. Yep. The ball comes in over the top. An opportunity locker and just, well, he was going to give it back to the keeper, but great work there. Ball's gone inside. And this time, Besser come out from the far side, trying to set up. A scoring opportunity in the forward division. Lachlan has ghosted up on the right hand side and if he, well, he took the eye of the ball that time, but again, great bit of pressure in the middle. So, Beswick have a chance here, but again, crowded out by the rear guard of Orchard, but the ball is headed back in again, so it's a chance for Beswick. Ball is broken out, the referee is indicated, Robbie, that that's a free out. That's a free out, it's a late challenge of McDack Allister. I think uh, Bessie have up their game here the last couple of minutes, so it'll be interesting to see how the next 10 minutes go. If, if anything's going to happen in this game, they're going to have to get a goal then and push on. Well, they're definitely going to need a goal in the next couple of minutes to get themselves back into this game. It's 4-1 to Archer, and the four goals have been scored by that legendary soccer player who will be legendary after this Daggy Carvel. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see him. So... Well, Archard driving forward, an opportunity, there's a great strike, there's a super strike, and well held by Connor. But well, that was a great strike from Archard. Great strike from uh, Mickey Green, ball, and it was on actually to take a touch, and I'm taking now two yards onto it, but he's called it sweet, and it was a fantastic save, to be honest. So it's a throw-in for Beswick Archard. on the far side, Robbie, and Beswick driving definitely forward. have the start to push on a wee bit, and Archard trying to say, look, we need to go for this, we're down 4-1. We might as well give it a lash. Yeah, it looks like they're going to give it a go. I think a young PJ on the ball now. I think he was a bit uh, annoyed he was left out of the starting line. So he maybe thinks he's a point to prove. Well, the ball again has been recycled by Archer. And Archer just right on the edge of the penalties. But pushing the ball is very hard to see over in the corner. There, Robbie, where the lights yeah. are a wee bit dim. A wee bit dim. I think they're missing one of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great that the, the showgrounds are hosting this game here tonight. It's brilliant to be here on this live soccer special on St. Patrick's weekend on Destiny St. Uri, bringing you live local sport around the world to our expats, every part of the world. We had Australia, Canada, America, the Arab Emirates, wherever you want to be, the Sahara Desert even, doesn't matter. <laughs> Robbie, we have it here tonight on Destiny St. Uri's live soccer special, the Bestbrook Cup final, where Bestbrook are getting beat 4-1, four goals by Robbie Casey, or Robbie Casey, if only, oh, yeah, well, Daggy Carvish. <laughs> <laughs> but again, Bestbrook, you know, they're, they're, they've put more effort in here this last five minutes, Robbie, trying to push forward with the substitutes, and as I say that, the, the ball is broken out, so... Bestwick need a goal in the next couple of minutes, Robbie, to definitely give themselves a bit of a chance. Yeah, they're going to have to get something from some of these attacks, which, which might come now. Oh. Well, again, okay, no. pretty tight defend there by Archer yeah, in, the, in, the, in the back. the back, to be honest. They're big, strong men at the back. Them. They're not giving them too much room. And Daly pushes that one along the ground. Well, that's a little bit of a push there. And don't forget, you get, you get all the... Well, you get a rerun of this tomorrow evening on the Saturday Sports Show. Of course, that's from 4 to 6 on Destination Uri, Robbie, the Saturday Sports Show, where we have the darts results, the pool results, the soccer results, and every other results that is happening as it happens. And, of course, the big rugby match in France tomorrow as well. We'll be picking up all that on the Saturday Sports Show on Destination Uri. But we're down in the dark corner here underneath is where the stanchion has gone missing. But... Well, that referee says play on. That was a wee bit like the game the other night in the European Championships. The ball goes across, and well, Mickey Green just stops, checks, and pulls that one down. Tackles come in, but best with trying gallantly here to get a score. But Archer, they're just packing the defence here. Lachlan, he's going to be trying to float this one in, but he sort of took his eye off the ball, and the ball was knocked out of play there by the Archard man, so that was great defensive work there by Thomas McCann. A 
chance for the centre forward for Bestwick. And well, he just pulled in that one, and Ferguson. Yeah, I think it was, it was a poor effort. He just turned on to his weaker side, and um, he's had a shot from 25 yards in really uh, trouble, Joe, and that's. Well, we're ha nearly halfway through the second half here, and it's 4 1 in favour of the men from the Orchard. Well, as they say, Robbie, the Orchard is ripening here tonight in the showgrounds. <laughs> it sure is, there's no doubt about that. Tommy Mooney's telling his charges to push forward, to push forward, but Orchard just hold the line comfortably and with Lee Feeney in the middle of the field earlier on Robbie he was just a joy to watch I was I think he's rolling back the years a few times in particular um, his pass for the first goal where he's he's done a bit of a cry turn and taken two men out of it and stepped the ball there said it was Brute Daggy Carvel who finished it with, with ease you know Maybe like a wee bit of cramp from one of the best Westwick men there but when you mention that man Cruyff I presume you're talking about Johan Cruyff the legendary Dutch footballer that I had the great pleasure of seeing in the Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton in Canada Back in the day, Robbie. So, uh, it was a few know, years ago, David. It was. It was 1979, Robbie. So, uh, it was. Uh, it was great to see that man. You know, sure like, it was. But you know, class is permanent. It is, as you know. I say, Feeney mightn't be the fittest person on the field, but getting the ball in, he'll open you up. There's no doubt about it. So, Bestbrook, well, they're down four to one. So, Tommy Mooney, well, if you're a manager here, Robbie, and you're down, you've 25 minutes left, 20 minutes left. What would you be thinking? What do is we stick maybe a big um, Ferguson up top, just throw the ball in and we'll see what happens because they try the ball down on the line to get it wide, try and get it in the box. But I mean, they've got to try something different now where if they go three at the back and, and four in midfield and three up top. And the CR is going to be making a change, they're going to be bringing Darren Clark into the fray here in the next minute or two. But great bit of defensive work there by Alistair. Alistair gets that one, pushes it long all the way out into the middle. And as I said, you know, best have pushed up a wee bit, but again, the ball has been given away, and that ball had probably run out. But great bit of work there by the Bestwick man. No, he didn't get it. I thought he did, but I think Tommy, what Tommy Mooney has done, Robbie, is he's, he's pushing his man up front and he's changed his format a wee bit. Yeah, he has. He had to do something to try and make a game, but now, um, I mean, he's added a bit of pace to the team as well uh, with him and PJ and that. Um, so in goes Clark, Clark is in and not even sure who's come off there. Ah, uh, Stephen, Stephen Daly's come off, so Clark for Daly. In the middle, there's a great header out there. The referee has indicated that that's clash of heads. Best with man's down there. Tommy Mooney's going, can anything else go wrong here this evening? I think Jerry Patton stand up saying there, bring me on, I'm available. You know, Jerry wouldn't be the worst person to bring on, to be honest. I've seen Jerry in action a few times, and he'll do all right. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. And he, he says he played in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the zeros. And he wanted to play... Is this the 1960s, 1970s, or 1860s? Well, there you have it. But fair play to Archer to give the ball back there. And it's with Connor Ruddy. Connor just pushes it long. Best would need to get a goal here. But Ravi... Great bit of defensive shield at the back there yeah, from Orchard. Orchard are solid at the back. Um, to be honest, you can't see a way through for Bestwick, but you never know. Well, the ball's been drilled in this time. An opportunity this time for Phil Potty. Puts the ball across, and out comes Price, and he just gathers up at his, at his leisure. And he takes, he's like Usain Bolt coming out there with the ball. He throws it long, and Orchard break at speed. Carvel puts the ball on the outside. He scored four, and he's still going strong. Still has the ball on his foot, but this time he gave the ball away. But Bestwick hit on the counter from the far side, trying to get the ball down. But again, they need to be pushing more men inside. And again, Joe Price, well, Joe nearly fumbled that one. And he nearly fumbled it, but he didn't. But Robbie, the ball is long. You know, they're trying to play football. The ball is pushed along the ground all the time here. It is. It's nice to see. You know, the lads are getting, the, especially on the pitch, I guess, where it deserves proper football play. And as we say, the ball goes 40 yards in the air. So, but Black Gell is that one. Pulls it round, spins round, gives it in. Well, he tipped over the ball there, or was, he was it caught? Just Stephen Larkin caught him there. So, a couple of Bestwick men cramping up here, and they've no substitutes. So. I just think, Robbie, we're not going to have extra time, that's for sure. Because no, it doesn't look that way, to be honest, David. Bestwick would need to be scoring three goals, and it doesn't look to be if it's going to happen. 
but no. you have to be pretty impressed with Archer's performance here tonight. Yeah, you have to be. They're a, they're a solid unit, right? From from Joe Wright. Okay, Joe's made one mistake. I think I don't think he's had to see him make the second half yet. But I think the defensive unit has been uh, their starting block. They've been fantastic. Big Daggy Allison at the back there has been uh, a rock for them, to be honest. So this time out comes Bestbrook with Philpott, and the ball is broken over the line, and it's a throw in for Archer right right in the middle of the field. So. Clark just throws that in. Back, puts it inside. Carvel just offloads the ball, but a wee bit short. It's up in the air this time. Referee's uh, Lions man has indicated there's an offside there, Robbie. So yeah, I think Keith Johnson went forward from the first one and never got back in time. So when the second ball came in, he was about a half yard off. So the ball, as we talked earlier on, it was on the ground now, it's bobbling in the air. Two Archer men go for the ball, that's a little bit of a hand there, but Q's get away with that one. But again, good defensive play there by Archer. Yeah, big dag, I think he's gone for the first one and, and he's missed it, but he's recovered well to, to hook the ball out of play. But Archer keep their shape right, you know, they keep their shape right across the field, Robbie, and they, 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 they don't panic too much. No, they don't. I mean, there's a lot of experienced players out there that play at a, at a higher level. Yeah, I mean, the likes of Carville, Johnson, Daggy Allister, McCann, Lee Feeney, and players played the highest level in Europe. So, um, you know, they, they are a fantastic, well drilled, well organised. So, Stephen Larkin's going to be taking this free, trying to float it in, and I hope that Bestwick can get a nod on towards the goals and get the ball into the back of the net, which they would need to be doing because we're down to the last 20 minutes of the game. That's a lovely ball floated in, but again, no pressure at the final end of the pass, Robbie. No, again, it's a, it's a floated ball in the box. It's a, a hit and hope, really, with, with nobody making a, an actual run for the ball. And it's just come off the top of the Bestwood players heading out for a, a, a bye ball. Well, we have 30 minutes gone. We have 15 minutes left here in this Bestwood Cup final down in the showgrounds where Bestwood Products won the first Cup final 45 years ago. And, well, the current Bestwood team, they're under a wee bit of pressure. They're getting beat here 4-1. Four goals scored by their ex-player, Dackie Carvel. But Lachlan pushes the ball inside. This time it goes into Philpott, down along the line. Picked up again there by Matthews, young Stephen Matthews, but the ball has been given away. Archer down the break out. Give the ball away this time in the middle of the field, which they didn't do in the first half, but they gathered it back here. So Archer's on a break here. Dackie Carvel gets the ball under his toe. Checks inside, tries to go past two Bestwick men, but just overcooked the pass. Yeah, looks Jack, like he's struggling a wee bit too there. Well. Bit, yeah, yeah he looks a wee bit tired. Matthews offloads the pass. Change very soon. Well, as I said, that he's sprinting towards the ball. As we, 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 we write him off, he still goes to the ball and he's looking for another goal, but he's right along the end line and he's just going to push it back all the way back to Jonathan Black. Jonathan Black puts it inside, goes looking for the return pass. But I think Carvel's cramping up here. Yeah, it looks Robbie. like we're going to make a change now. Um. So Bestwick down 4-1 here. Stephen Lockern. Stephen Lockern looking for the pass, but with a good bit of defensive work there by the Archer men. Stole that ball off Lockern. And again, the tackle's flying in here underneath us, Robbie. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, one thing you get out of you know, Cinnamon is a, is a committed challenge, and it was a great challenge to come off the Archer man for his throw. So. But they give it away again. Well, Lachlan was lucky. Referee says he got the ball, but the ball has floated in over the top. So, Black is after that one, but that's good work by Lachlan. Keith Johnson's pulled up as well, so, so a lot, lot of guys, lot of guys, guys cramping up, right. up yeah. But again, best with the not pushing far enough up that on a high line here. The ball goes all the way back to Price. Well, and and Price just luck. hits that one up in the air, pushes it along towards the centre. Lachlan, well, he hits that with the back of his back and knocks it down, gets up. Well, that was a chance for Bestbrook. There's a great ball inside. Can they get the pass in? But this time it goes out for a goal kick. Goal kick it is, yeah. Well, I suppose when Archer's sitting 4 1 up, Robbie, they're, they're comfortable in their, in, their, in, in their game and they don't really have to push too far. Up, all they have to do is just consolidate the game in the middle park, the middle of the park, and that's it, the game's over. Yeah, I think it is. You know, they've defended well, but I don't think. Um They've, they've passed it quite as well as they could have in the second half since Feeney's gone off. Well, it was 33 minutes elapsed here in the second half, so 
And don't forget, of course, the Saturday sports show in Destination Uri, where we'll again give a, a roundup of the game this evening. And who knows, maybe even get Daki Carvel to come in and have a chat with us, Rabbi, if he would be able. Um, I'm sure he'll celebrate the night and enjoy the night. Yeah, he'll pack the caught there. I'm sure. So, of course, the Saturday sports show from 4 to 6 on Destination Uri, bringing you all the live action and all the local weekend sports, pool, darts, soccer, rugby, you name it, we have it. On Destination Uri, the boss got put ball in by Locker and he was going for that one and Joe Price just caught that one and came out. So maybe Stephen was trying to hope that somebody would come in at the end of that one and head it in. Yeah, maybe, I think maybe looking at uh, the, 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 towards the end of the first half of the ball was slowed in and Joe had, had, uh, had fluffed his lines as such. So maybe looking something along the same lines there. Well, I suppose when you're sitting 4-1 up, you're under no pressure. The keeper's not under any pressure, so he knows if he makes a mistake, he'll be grand. So the confidence then will be back up again. But Lachlan, he's on this one. Stephen Lachlan, a young man from the Balnaby Road in Bestwick. Tucker gives that one away. So Arch should just hold the ball in the middle. Given away this time, but out comes best. But just hit and hope down the line, down to channels. But again, they need to be getting this across, Robbie. Yeah, he's um, put a great ball down the line to Philip <laughs> Hughes, and he's actually got a free out of it now. So, be sort of a half rugby tackle. <laughs> if that was in the uh, Park de France tomorrow, you would be saying that was a great half. Yeah, you'd be happy enough, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> you definitely <laughs> would. And of course, Brian O'Driscoll, the, the legend of this Brian O'Driscoll, return tomorrow. Yeah, he's, um, so we have a new substitute, another man coming in for Archard, and we have uh, Darren Hillen coming in for Archard. So we have an opportunity here for Bestwick. Well, there was a yellow card issued there to, I think, Daggy Ellis, I think. Yeah, Daggy got it. Yeah, yeah, he picked up the, the yellow card. Keith Johnson making way for Big Hilly now. That was a big man that's coming in there, number 17. Yeah, he looks like a big player, doesn't he? He does. He's, <laughs> he's about six foot four by the looks of him. I can tell you. He six has foot about four all the way around. He's about ten minutes to make a name for himself here. But Bestwick have an opportunity here to get one on the board. Good ball in, good delivery. But again, well comfortably defended by Archard. Phil Pat goes on the outside again. Plenty of space. A lovely ball in. There was a chance for Bestbrook, but again. Well defended by the men from the Archer. But as I said that, the ball's given away to Philpott. Philpott goes one way, he checks the other, he goes on the long way around. And this time again, he's been caught. So he has another chance, Robbie. Another good delivery here. Yeah, they need a good delivery. The, the last one was, was a poor delivery. We've got to get it closer to the, the six yard line with this one. Give the, give the forward something to, to aim at. Well, Philpott's going to be drilling this one, and that's exactly what he does. But uh, well, that was as close as best we got to scoring the second half, and it was put over the bar by Alistair. Big dig, Alistair. Get on the end of that one. <coughs> Robbie, you have to be very, very impressed with the Archer performance here tonight. It was, it was superb. Yeah, I've been. Um, I've seen him a few times this year, but I think tonight on the big pitch suits their style of play. But as you say, the the two banks of four, the, the four defenders, four midfielders have been solid, and you know they've been uh, particularly tough to break down tonight. And we're quite honest, best we could find no way past them. Well, there's a wee bit of shenanigans going on in the centre of the goals there. <laughs> 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 trying to roll off the player here, and this time headed out. Best we're trying to get it down, trying to get it across, trying to get a shot in. And that's a Holy Mary, Mother of God one there, Robbie. <laughs> I think it is, or it was a hit and hope. That was Locker, I think, hit that one. It was the right back, yeah. Well, as we see, we're on it with 37 minutes gone, so we're rattling down towards the end of the game here. And I suppose the. Archard, well they're in cruise control here Robbie, there's no doubt about that and I just noticed that Joe, he hasn't kicked any of these long frees out or no, these long I, goal kicks No, I noticed the first half he took a bit of a knock to the hip and he hasn't hit any of the, the goal kicks at all Well this time Bestwick trying to get another ball into the forward division but it ain't happening goes along down to Hughes, Philip Hughes pushes one across and Bestwick's looking for just the, the wee bounce, Robbie, and it's not coming to them. No, you know, there's it, nothing going for them. Nothing, there's poor deliveries into the box, and they're just feeding off scraps at the minute. And to be honest, the Archer aren't giving them much to feed off. And then again, they're just kicking the ball away when they get possession. So there's a great bit of work there by 
Number 15, David the young David McCabe, one of the young players. Well, there's a foul there, and he got a kick for his troubles. <laughs> but we're rattling towards the 40th minute. Off the second half here, we're 38 minutes, Robbie gone. Seven minutes left. Presswick again, they need a good delivery right on the button here. In a speed and power, and hope that somebody can get their head on it. And again, again said, it's fallen 10 yards short, doesn't give the, the forwards a chance at all. And again, just you know, kicking the ball from 30 yards out. And We've got to try and work an angle here and get it wide and get into the box, but um, you can see their heads are down. I think they've given up. There's Tommy Mooney's down, scratching his head on the end of his uh, technical box, as they say, and uh, it would be it would be soul destroying if you're a manager of a team and but what do you do Robbie you know the, you try your best and if you no. give your best and it's not good enough well that's all you well, can yeah, do I think you know the guys have tried hard but sometimes you just come up against better teams and that's what's happened tonight with with Berser against Orchard I mean uh, the first 20 minutes they were pound for pound they were they're all on on a level but you well, see Orchard's on the attack here Carl was going looking for his fifth the ball comes in over the top and he has a chance here and he's going to pull it but he just pushes it back and a great, a great Great save, a great save by the keeper. Yeah, good save there by Connor Ruddy. Ruddy yeah. We're in the 39th minute, just tapping the 40th minute here in the second half. And yeah. Archard, Carl was going looking for his cup final. The game that should have been played on Boxing Ball Day. Comes in over the top, and he has a chance final here. And he's going to pull it. But this is 2014 now, but. Back. I'm sure it doesn't really matter. It's the best with cup it's final anyway. Cup final. I think so it makes sense to have it this time of year where. Well, I, I absolutely agree, I good, absolutely you know, agree with you, honest. Robbie. There's no yeah. doubt about that. You know, I know maybe people say Boxing Day and all that yeah, and traditional. Tradition, yeah, but, but, you know, this proves it here tonight. The chance here for Bestbrook, but yeah. again, again, pulling it to the left. Yeah, he's just pulled it a bit where he's got to hit the target. There was, you know, it opened up for him. And, and uh, again, it was a Philly Cues, I think it was. He's got to hit the target from there. Well, Robbie, we have, we have to congratulate Brian Norton and Jimmy Davis for the great work that they do in the local soccer yeah. leagues and cups and what have you. Like, Jimmy Davis is an absolute institution and a legend in this area. And uh, you know the, the, the council have recognised what he does by introducing the Jimmy Davis Soccer uh, Award, the Sports Awards, uh, and this year Warren Point Town picked it up. Yeah, I think it's fantastic, Jay. So these two guys are just non-stop. I mean, from when he started playing junior football, which was a few years ago, um, Jimmy took control and everything then, and you know the, it's well, a medal that you guys when deserve. When I was playing football, and Jimmy Davis was an institution then, and yeah. like Jimmy has never changed from the first time that ever I met him. No. He's still the same Jimmy Davis, you know. But there we have Bestbrook on the attack down on the right hand side, Lockern. Well, the ball has gone out, and it looks to be a throw in for Archie along the line here. It just sort of sums up Bestbrook's night there, where he's taken a touch and it's gone out of play, and just nothing seems to go right from now. 41 minutes, four minutes left in this cup final. Well, Robbie, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you the, 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 the opportunity to, to pick uh, your man of the match or your most valuable player here tonight. So, I think it's not going to be a hard. Uh, I, I think it'll be a hard decision. I don't think, know, I think if, uh, if Lee Feeney had stayed on for for 90 minutes, he was in the shirt. But there was only one man in it tonight, and it's a uh, big daggy Carver. So, Destination Yuri's man of the match in the Bestwick Cup final is Big Daggy Carver. So, Daggy picks up that award. Well done to Daki Carver. Well, he scored four goals in the cup final. Robbie, uh, <laughs> title be in the hunt for. Somebody says Man he has done an awful lot more, but if he scored <laughs> score four goals in the final, he deserved to pick up the accolades. So there we are. So destinations, man of the match tonight in the best with cup final is big Daki Carver. So congratulations to Daki. I know in the Premiership they we give them a big bottle of champagne and all that, but we we don't do things like that, Robbie. We just give them the, the acknowledgement that they're man of the match here this evening. Well, I think that's enough for Daki. To be quite honest. So. There's a throw-in on the far side. We're waiting to see the ball has disappeared somewhere. So, well, we have the ball back in play now. And Archer, well, they're going looking for another goal, Robbie. Even right well, at the at the end. Ball into the box here. Carvel's in again. Oh, he was oh. looking for it, and he nearly he nearly yeah, got in there again. We nudging on the right back. So we're rattling towards the end of the half. Forty-two and a half minutes gone. Two and a half minutes left. Plus injury time this evening in this Bestwood Cup final. we go so a little bit of a
Hatchlands in the middle of the field there by that big man. I'll tell you what, <laughs> big Darren Hill, I wouldn't want to be arguing with him, right? No, I wouldn't like to run in. He's a big unit, isn't he? Yeah, so Bestwick down in the corner here, down in the dark corner. Trying to walk, just trying to get a score, trying to keep the games alive. And the ball goes in along the ground. An opportunity for Bestwick, but Shepard yeah, out yeah, there by three. Again. Archer, man, the ball goes over the far side. Well, again, an opportunity there for Bestwick, but well defended by Archard. And they're going to break out of speed here, so Archard have a three on two here. Garvin's looking for it, the ball's going to go to the far side, inside now. Well, maybe he should have just slipped the ball in, Robbie. I think he should have slipped out the big hill, he made a great run in behind the fullback, but Mickey's actually yeah, taking an extra touch. Pass inside. Yeah. Well, we're rattling towards the end of the half here, where I see Brent Monahan down there trying to get a good picture of the, the Archard manager. As we rattle towards the end of the game, 43 minutes and 50 seconds gone. Whatever injury time the referee decides to play, probably only but Well, there might be a wee bit of injury time for Carvel. Maybe a bit, but uh, I think Bestbrook are glad to see the final whistle. No doubt about it. But Bestbrook, you know, they've given us a great game here this evening. They had to be fair, you know, the, um, I think in particular at the back, I know Big Daggy scored four, but uh, I think with Cinnamon and uh, Big Kevin Carr at the back have, have showered him well at times, but. Um, Daggy's class actually came to the fore. So. And he just needs a he just needs a little inch and he and he and he, and he picks that up and put the ball in the back in that four times. But Archer have a corner right here at the end, right down, and there'll be probably no hurry to take it. Robbie, as we look, we're forty two minutes and a half gone. There's yeah. thirty seconds left in the best Cup final. They've kept five men back. Um the two big men up top and two in the edge of the box, so they're Well this ball's gonna come in and they're hoping that somebody can get ahead on it. A great delivery, but it's gone deep to the far side. Ball is broken out, an opportunity for Archard, but it would be cruel for Bestwick if there was another goal scored at this stage. I think it was stage. because, you know, there was a proper patch for Bestwick there with it. Black is in, and he just puts it across. Well, he yeah, went out of... back there, yeah. So there's another chance here for Archard. They'll be floating again, one end to the big man, Helen at the far side. Big Darren Helen, he's over on the far side. He'll be waiting to get his head on this one. So the referee's probably saying, game's nearly over, just... This is like a short corner in hockey here, Robbie, <laughs> that's for sure. Let's see, can they work something from it then? Maybe just drills it low and hard across the goal mouth and hope yeah, that it'll be... There's a big space there, right, on the yeah. six-yard line, so... Yeah. And Carvel's in there looking. Big Helen. Oh. Well, that's a great, great header out there by the rear guard at Bestbrook, and the ball is knocked out on the far side, so it's a throw-in. Well, it's a throw in for Bestwick on the far side, so... Robbie, just pretty impressed with Archer's performance throughout. Yeah, have been, um, they've been solid all over there. I think their fitness level as well is quite high. Um, they, I mean, they've, they've worked their socks off and they're a solid unit, so I mean, I think anybody who comes up against them this year will find it tough. And of course, when we talk about Lee Feeney, you know, absolutely superb footballer. Superb footballer, but I mean, you get an hour of him, you know what you're going to get. Um, this is somebody who's played for Linfield and Arsenal, he played for Rangers and he's he's played in Australia in different places. So, I mean, if you're bringing somebody to get into your ranks, you, you, you mean business. There's a big hit now over there, so the referee has indicated that that's a free and there's a best man taken down. So, But he's okay, up he gets. Carvel is, well, he, he, he's, he's hobbling there. He's a lot of cramp, picked up a wee bit of cramp as well and he's looking over the line but I don't think he's going to get substituted at this stage. There's no chance stage. of him coming <laughs> off now is there? <laughs> don't think so. So I think with Bestwick uh, all they can do here is maybe just have a pop and try and get the ball in the back of the net. Yeah let's try and work the keeper here at this and at least hit the target. Uh, I think it's Philly Cuse that's on it so. He'll have a go. Philly will have a go right. This could be the final play of the game Robbie. In the yeah I think it is. Cup final the Bestwick Cup final here on Soccer Special and Destination area and as I say that that's exactly what he does but the well, the wall done what it was supposed to do and then Lagan hits a sweet ball but it goes to the right and wide. Oh, let's give a corner. No it's corner. Or oh, somebody had a foot up is it a free? I'm not sure what the referee's doing here he's giving a free. I uh, know it's a corner. Corner. So Bestwick have another chance one more chance to try and get a score on the board. It's 4 1 to Archer, ready right to death here. And of course, the mo Saturday sports show from 4 to 6 on Destination. The ball goes in, an opportunity there. Oh, but it's a free header, he's got to hit the target. Well, there we have it, Robbie. It's uh, a big win for Archer City here tonight in the Best Week Cup final. And a lovely evening down here in the showgrounds. Showgrounds looking splendid. And it's great to see Nuri back on the map playing soccer. 
I think it's fantastic, yeah, you know, for a full credit to Darren Mullen from what he's done to the club. He's he's dragged them out of the ashes and, you know, he deserves any uh, praise that he gets. But again, as you say, it's a great win for Orchard. I think it sends a signal out to everybody else now that they've, they've completely won this final 4-1 and I think they're going to go on and challenge the league as well. That's for sure. And again, defending very, very gallantly at the end of the game here with a 4-1 up. But Carvel trying to get his... Well, almost, trying almost into a run there, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he, he almost <laughs> went to run. He was like Fred Flintstone there and Barney Rubble <laughs> heading out in the car. But he was all right. But Bestbrook driving oh. forward, trying to get a little ball goes out. It just slides out another little bit, a chance for Bestbrook. But Robbie, that just signifies Bestbrook's night tonight. And, the final and as I said, that the final whistle is gone. Orchard four goals, Bestbrook one. So it's four to one in favour of the men from Orchard, the Bestbrook Cup champions. They got beaten in the final last year, they won it this year, and Robbie, for the first time, they get the new cup presented to them tonight. Yeah, fair play to them, it's uh, I see a nice chair there, Clifford's gone, Sir Hans and Tommy Rooney, but I think there's only one team in it tonight, to be quite honest, and they're going to be hard to stop this year, whatever competition they're playing in. Well, all we can say is congratulations to Orchard tonight and their fabulous win, their fabulous type of football they played here tonight. Hard luck to Bestbrook, who gallantly fought right to the end. It just wasn't their night. Well done to the referees and the officials as well. And of course, thanks to Robbie Casey and Gareth McCullough for helping us out here on our Friday night soccer special on Destination Uri. Well, thanks very much for having me, Damien. Pleasure, Robbie. And uh, any time we're about, we'll always uh, avail of your expertise. Of course, Robbie Casey, uh, a super legend in the, the local soccer scene here, played for Newry, played for Portadown, and played, I don't know who all you played for. I played for Armand Distillery, and then I got fed up playing, so I retired. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the night. I have to thank Andrew, Arne, and Damien in the background this evening for bringing this live soccer special here this evening between Orchard and Bestwick in the cup final. The Bestwick cup final where Daki Carvel's four goals lifted the title for Orchard. Big Daki, well, he's going to enjoy the night, that's for sure, Robbie. There's no doubt about it, he one or two pints tonight. Uh, I think he's deserved them, he's worked hard and uh, deserves his man of the match award as well. Well, that's for sure. So I see Andrew, he's pretty happy. He's seen Lee Feeney playing tonight and he's quite delighted that he had the opportunity to watch Lee Feeney playing here tonight in the showgrounds. And as you look down, the presentation party will commence to present the cup and the trophies and we'll hand this over. Uh, hopefully the lads are just going to follow this down and we'll maybe pick up some of the lads in a minute or two. Already, okay. So we're back now, and we're going to the presentation. As we look down, Robbie, we see uh, uh, all the players gathering up down there. The press is down there. The photographers down there. The, the best big boys are down cramping up as well. We see Patsy Finnegan there, another legend in the, in the local soccer scene. Brian Norton's down there talking to everybody. So, Robbie, I'm not sure if they decide to give the the player the match. I wonder would they agree with us here tonight? Well, I think they're going to have to. Uh, everybody scores four goals in the cup final deserves a man of the match. It's an easy choice for them to make. So. I see Brian. Is that Brian or Jimmy down there? Brian Norton down there, sort of 
he's talking to the master ceremonies, he's talking to the two teams and congratulating them on, on the performance here tonight. And of course, Brian Norton does tremendous work for the local soccer scene here in Uri. As does Jimmy Davis. And of course, we have to thank the officials here this evening. The, the great performance there by the officials. Good team, work well. And Robbie, the officials were very anonymous tonight. Yes, good to see that. Um, I think they've done a fantastic job tonight. Big Nealon in the centre of the park, was, as you say, was anonymous, and that's the sign of a good referee. No doubt about it. And as we look, Brian is. <laughs> Given plenty of uh, encouragement to both teams down there. Best would be very disappointed getting beat here the night 4 1, but we have to say hats off to Orchard City. Orchard City, absolutely brilliant performance here tonight in the Best Rick Cup final. To see Jimmy Davis down there, and Jimmy, he shuns publicity always, but uh, a legend and an icon here in the local soccer scene. So there goes the, the officials go up to pick up their, their little. Momentums of the occasion here this evening, and of course, Robbie, it's always great to be a part of a cup final. Yeah, it's always nice to be part of it, and it's a special occasion. It's, uh, it's the uh, major cup in Uri to play for, and uh, as you say, it's a fantastic venue for it as well. So, fair play to everybody involved. And of course, Robbie, the, the Willie Manny tournament coming up in July, the Celtic connection, there's a big tournament coming up in July. I was breaking news the other night, Monday night, on Destination Uri, so uh, that's exciting times coming in July as well. That'll be more about that tomorrow on the Saturday Sports Show. And there we go. <laughs> I guess Cliffy accepting his award as manager, so fair play to him. So a good bit of support for the Archer. They've all stayed behind. The apples aren't falling at the tree anyway, that's for sure this evening. So as normal, the losers come up and pick up their trophies first. It's always a hard walk, Robbie, isn't it? Yeah, it's a tough walk. Uh, nobody wants to lose a cup final, but I think the guys, when they, they sit back and, and look at it, they, they'll understand they're beaten by a better team tonight, so it'll be a bit easier to accept. You won't like it, but you'll accept it. Well, there's no doubt this game will be back up again, so they can look at that, and uh, as they look down, we'll just pick up what's going on down below. There we go, Robbie. The victorious team goes and fair play on the walk over and shake hands with the, the Brook lads. So, um, a very special occasion tonight for Archard. Yeah, I think it's a nice touch for the lads just to go. I mean, they all know each other, they work, probably work together, live together, things to get. So, there's no animosity with each other. Obviously, everybody wants to win the final, but at the end of the day, I think they're all friends. So, it's, nice, it's a nice touch. Well, there's no doubt about that. And of course, the, the final presentation is almost complete here in the Best Cup final. But the last thing to do will be to present the new cup, the new Bespert Cup. And Jimmy Davis told me there this evening that uh, the cup was got. And Jimmy had it secreted in his car, hid away, that nobody would see it, Ravi. And uh, it would be presented to the winner right at the end. And there's Brian Norton. Brian is, well, we wait to see as he turned about man of the match. We'll see what happens here. There we go. <laughs> So Dacky Carvel picks up man of the match, Robbie. At least we agreed on one thing tonight. We got a spot on. I think we've got one thing right anyway, Damien. So again, it wasn't a hard choice to make. Well, if you score four goals in a cup final, you absolutely deserve to be picking up uh, the man of the match. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And Dacky absolutely deserved his trophy here tonight. Uh, he, he was pretty, pretty uh, up for the game when he says, I don't know what I'm going to do if I score a goal tonight, but he scored four. Yeah, I think a celebration needs to work on them a wee bit. All right, so he picks it up. So we now await the official presentation of the new Bestwick Cup to the winning team. So we await the captain of Archard, and he walks forward, and he will now be picking up the new Bestwick Cup. And there he goes. Christopher Hervin, Christopher picks up the new Bestwick Cup. 
and it's a lovely place to be presented with a cup final under the lights at the showgrounds here and a nice Friday evening towards St. Patrick's weekend in Newry and of course Destination Newry is delighted to be part of this soccer special this evening here creating history again Robbie bringing you live soccer for the first time the best with cup final streamed live around the world yeah, I think it's a nice touch by Destination Newry obviously there's people from Newry living all over the world and they can see what's happening now so it's a nice touch well, there we have it, the cup has been presented, the officials have done their bit and of course the old song is out, champions, champions. So uh, I have to thank Robbie Casey. Robbie it has been a pleasure having you on the second half here again. Create a little bit of history here tonight yourself as well. Yeah, it was nice to see uh, something I wasn't expecting when I came down to watch the game but uh, delighted to be part of it so thanks very much. Thanks a million Robbie and thanks to Gareth McCullough for the first half. So Robbie Casey, the legend that is Robbie Casey. Heads down the, the steps here and Archer, well, Archer just delighted to be the champions and the photographs will be picked up and we'll see can we get a little uh, interview with Daki Carville in the next minute or two. Uh, hopefully Daki will come up and we'll get an interview with Daki. So I'll just let Arne capture the moment here and I'll go and see can I pick up Daki.
And you're very welcome back on our Friday night soccer special here on Destination Yuri. And of course, we had to capture the man of the match himself, Daggy Carvel. Daggy, congratulations and well done. Thanks very much, Damon. Thank you. Daggy, I was talking to you before the match and you said, oh, I score a goal. I don't know what I'm going to do. But you scored four and I mean, that's stuff that legends are made of. Yeah. Listen to me, his team effort, like, it wasn't just based on me. Like, uh, the boys had to put the ball in the box for me to score and I was happy enough there to take the four of them. Like, but doesn't happen too often but I'm delighted and of course after Arsenal getting beat last year to come back this year I made a huge statement and I have to yeah. say Taki the, the, the standard of football was sublime tonight yeah we put a lot of effort in each week at training Tuesday and Thursday all we work on is press hard work hard and it showed there tonight like it no disrespect to press like we they were a great side in the night as well just maybe we've got a wee bit of luck but uh thought we pulled too strong near the end there and I'm very happy. There's no doubt and of course Daki scoring four goals in the cup final like it's uh, it's not yeah, <laughs> it's not too often that happens. If he was sort of giving us a bit of incentive before the game oh, there's no one ever scored a hat trick in the cup final there's, there's only one person ever scored a hat trick in this cup final so he was always in the air like so how to go and do one better. Well um, I'll tell you what there's only one man that I know has scored four goals in the cup final and that's Daki Carvel. Daki it, it, it was a great performance and I have to say the standard of football right across the park tonight and the showgrounds was in immaculate condition. Yeah it was a great pitch, uh, very well done the new time for keeping it in uh, great condition. I know Willie Young puts and Sean Gaffney puts a lot of organisation down here. I was down here a few years ago and it was great like so fair play to them. Well, Daggy, all I can say is congratulations, well done. It's not often you get to meet a man of the match, but a man of the match that scores four goals. Congratulations, and of course, you were destination junior man of the match as well. So, Thanks well done. Much, David. And, Daggy, this game has been uh, put out around the world tonight, and you've made a little bit of history tonight, not just for scoring four goals, but playing live on destination Yuri, the first ever Best Cup final streamed live That's on the internet. So, well done, Daggy, and good, Thank you. good luck. Go and enjoy your celebrations Thank and you. take it easy, and Cheers. we'll talk to you again. Thank you. Thanks a million. Right. And there we have it. So, uh, we've got Daggy Carvel, man of the match, and uh, supplying goal scorer here tonight. Created history, scored four goals. And that about wraps up our Saturday, our Friday night special here on Destination Yuri Live Soccer. Great to be part of it. Great to be part of making local sport and history here on Destination Yuri. And of course, we'll re talk this match tomorrow from four to six on the Saturday sports show and of course maybe we might get tacky in on Monday night on the Monday night sports show thanks to Aaron, Andrew and Damien in the background thanks to everybody for tuning in this evening and enjoy the night Archer City definitely will enjoy the, 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 the celebrations here tonight so from the showgrounds good luck good night and enjoy your weekend take it easy it's St. Patrick's weekend what a weekend for Archer